This is the RPM Podcast, starring Eric Brennan. No matter how much you wiggle and dance, the last few drops always land in your pants. Sam Ballard Jr. I can barely last half an hour. Neil Rutt III. I'm a motherfucking dwarf. Nick Rendo. Luigi follow only the Ferraris. And Josh Matthews. I learned that 57 is an even number. And welcome to the RPM RPM podcast. Uh, it's episode 114. Um, we have a pretty packed show today. Uh, right off the bat, I want to introduce you to uh, Josh Matthews. He's down at Waretown. He's the producer of the show. <laughs> it's run out of his studio. And across from him is Tim Riggleman, spotter for Eric Goodale on the Modified Tour. Across from him is his daughter, Alexis Riggleman, driver of the 09 Champ Cart at Wall Stadium <laughs> on the Sunday Series. We also have a special guest and Stafford Motor Speedway Modified Tour winner, Kyle Bonsignor. Kyle, how are you? I'm doing good, guys. How about you? Oh, we're doing awesome. He also has a spotter with us. Uh, he goes by the nickname of Hollywood. Hollywood, how are you? Oh, just dandy, boys. Y'all doing all right? <laughs> I swear, his, must, his voice got mo- must... more southern the second you introduced him. <laughs> <laughs> when the cameras turn on, he turns real southern. He's, he's no, no, uh, another Long Island guy. You guys must be smiling from your big Stafford when uh, you want to tell us a little bit about it, how your day went, um, where did you guys qualify, how many laps did you lead, anything you want to tell us about the race? Which one? Uh, well, either one, Kyle or Hollywood. Yeah, well, we, uh, we had his. Uh, pretty good qualifying effort. We qualified 12th. Uh, we weren't really, we were, we were more focused on getting our car drivable for a long run in the race than, you know, our qualifying speed. And it showed in qualifying. I mean, we were, we were amongst good cars, but we weren't, you know, near the top of the board, but we were, we weren't upset with where we started. And it's in the first, uh, first 40 or 50 laps, we picked up several spots, just, you know, driving through the field with guys that, were fading and uh they had a couple of a string of cautions there and i think we had a red flag and uh we got we worked our way up to either it was either sixth or seventh and then all the pit stops started and that kind of the pit stop strategy at stafford is way different than anywhere else just because it's the one tire per stop race which i think is a is a great thing for making the races exciting there um and keeping the fans on their toes because there's a lot of cars moving throughout the field, either fading or, or moving up. And the, uh, I mean, if it wasn't for those pit stops, I, I honestly think that the 15 would have just drove away and won the race. I mean, he didn't pit at all, and he led like 130 laps. So we once we started taking tires and we played a different strategy than everybody else. I think the only other car that was on our strategy was the 85 car. Uh, where we took two tires uh, around halfway, and then we took another two with 30 or 40 to go. Um, and we, I mean, we everything worked out perfect. We missed a big wreck uh, <laughs> after one of the restarts, and we restarted in the right lanes, and we were able to move through the field really quick. We, I think we restarted, I, I don't know, Hollywood probably remembers, but I think it was like 15th when we came out of the pits with our new tires at the end of the race, and we cut through the field pretty quick and and uh, got up to the front and the cautions fell just perfect and everything worked out right. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the tire rule that they have? You said that you're only allowed to take one tire. Is that one tire for the whole race or just one tire per pit, pit stop? Yeah, well, you're allowed. So you're allowed four tires to change during the event. One of them can be a scuff. Uh, and the other three have to be brand new tires but you're only allowed to take one new tire so one t- new tire is allowed to be introduced to the car every time that you make a pit stop so if you want to change a tire or you want to change two you got to come in stop change it leave and come back around if you want to change another one under that same caution you come back down pair road change another one uh you just got to be really mindful that you don't go a lap down because you can get caught up, especially at a place like Stafford where pit roads, you know, tight. So you got to wait for other people to get in, get out. Um, but every time that you want to take a tire, you got to come in and make another stop. There's no two, three tires at one time. Like you see at Thompson or any of the other track. Uh, now, now what's the reason for a rule like that? Is this so you don't have to have so many crew guys to save money on crew guys or 
Well, I think I think it's a a couple of things. I think they do it uh, first and foremost. I think they do it for the fans. Um, I think they do it to keep the race exciting, and it seems that they that's been the case uh, at least the last three races at Stafford because there's always been someone, you know, it's always been a, a strategy game um, where it, it been it really it's been the person who takes the tires at the right time that wins the race. Whereas right. prior, you know, everybody takes their tires at the same time and the fastest car always seemed to win the race unless something happened to them. Um, also, I think that it's a, a safety thing because Stafford's pit road is much smaller than somewhere like Thompson. And you have half the people going over the wall. So it's a lot less bodies out there. Um, and it, it, uh, it seems to work. I mean, it, there, has, there have not been any, you know, incidents uh pit road is always kind of crazy especially when you're a car leaving pit road there's cars in the grass there's cars everywhere um but oh it, yeah it i was i was hit, i think i was hit by robbie summers back on the old uh 36 days when i was carrying tires for eddie whalen that was <laughs> now, when we it, were able to able to take four tires now, now is stafford the only track they do that or they do that at thompson also they don't do that at Thompson. Uh, the only other track that they do that at is actually is Myrtle Beach. Uh, I think they do it at Myrtle Beach to keep costs down because it's so far away. You don't have to have the full pit crew there. Right. Um, and also, Myrtle Beach would kind of get out of hand with how quick that place eats tires. And, uh, you know, I mean, everybody would be coming in for, you know, as many tires as they could right away. And, it would make for a really weird race. Actually, it'd be super slow by the end of the race. So, so uh, is there a um, particular strategy that most people seem to use as far as which tire you use first, or do you go, you know, do you throw a, you know a quarter and <laughs> see what happens? If you put it, a right it, rear on first or a right front on first, how, how do you figure out what tire you want to put on? It seems to change uh, depending on the track. Like when we went there uh, in the spring. The track had so much speed uh, because they had just like sealed all the cracks with like tar, you know, like the ceiling stuff. Yeah. Um, they, they broke the track record in qualifying, and the track was super fast. And it seemed that everybody except for the winning car took their tires early because they were going so fast that they just burned them up. Uh, and they took all three. Uh, I think Priest ended up winning with all three at once, and he took them later than everybody else. In the in the fall race, though, they put the PJ one in the outside groove. So at the fall final, it was it was really different. If you put on, there's some people like we took two right sides and then we took two rears. Um, that's actually what Eric Goodell used last year at the fall final to win the race. Um, it seemed to work again this year. Uh, but uh, we took. I mean, it, it's really weird. You you start off with a harder right rear tire. Everybody has to start with the same right rear tire, and then. You've got the option to change it to a softer tire. Everybody always goes with a softer tire, but that's really the only thing that everybody has in common is they all go to a softer right rear, but they do it in different order and different fashion. Uh, so that it's, I think it's, I think it's uh, a lot more of a tool that you can use to move throughout the field, being able to change just one tire per stop. Because sometimes you have time to change them, sometimes you don't. It really makes it. It makes it more challenging, but it makes it a lot easier to gain or lose spots, you know, with just just with the tires that you take, you know, not not adjustments. So. Right. Uh, now, is there any allowance for, uh, I mean, when you cut a tire down um, that where they don't count it towards that or. Yeah, you're allowed, you have your uh, you have your emergency tires. So if your if your tire comes in on the rim. You're allowed to pull an emergency tire, so basically like a, a, a practice tire that you bought at the track that weekend that's scanned in. You can use one of those instead, so you don't use up all your or uh, one or two stickers because you ran over something on the track. Now, does that also count against? How many times did you use that weekend? Oh uh, well, uh, we use, you're allowed eleven for the race day or the between practice and. You know, it's an 11 tire event, and then we start on four stickers for practice, so 15 tires total. Oh my God! What, what's the cost of a tire on the modified tour now? Uh, 
I, I don't know what the I don't I, I try not to look at it yeah. that pays the tire bill. But right. so my tire bill for last weekend was just under I wanna say it was just under three thousand bucks. Oh my god. For fifteen tires. So whatever that math works out to. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, that's the tough part about our sports. I mean the two biggest expenses in motorsports is the engines and the tires. And unfortunately the tires just kill you. Uh, at least when you buy an engine, you have the engine, you know what I'm saying? The tires is like, even with my racing the other day, I was going through my tire pile. And every time I moved the tire, I'm like, well, there's a hundred bucks out the window. There's a hundred bucks out the window. I got a stack of them in my backyard. That's just, but it's always been like that. It's just something you got to figure into your season when you get started. Um, was this your first win on the modified tour? It was, yeah. We actually we came close uh, two or three times on the Southern Modified Tour when they still had it, right. and and after that kind of went you know belly up. The it, it's been tough for us to run a lot, especially in the North. So it was the first win for me in a Modified ever, um, and first win on the tour. So it was good to kind of check both of those off the list in one day. So so your car, yeah, uh, you live down in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina. You said. Um, it's, so the car's still housed in North Carolina then? Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's about five minutes from my house, uh, and we, I mean, it's really just, uh, me, my dad, and, uh, a couple of, you know, friends that come over, help us work on it, but it's, everything is down here. The only thing, I mean, I moved from New York 13 years ago, so, uh, the only thing that, that people think that I'm from New York is because I'm hometown. I've got Bayshore, New York, just because that's right, where I'm yeah. from. So people just assume that I, I'm like Justin's brother and I live in the same house as him or something right, like that. Right, right, right. Um, have, have you been doing other, other racing down there other than the modified, uh, NASCAR Modified Tour? Like, do you go to Bowman Gray or uh, do you do any of the, 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 you know, there still is that one Southern Modified Racing Series? Do you do any, any racing? No, racing? We, don't, we don't run Bowman Gray just because uh, I try and, I mean, I only have, Really, right now, I only have one car. I've got two chassis. Uh, one is, By the uh, way, our producer, Josh, doesn't like Bowman Gray, so he's happy that you don't race there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can totally understand. It's not really racing to me. Right. Um, I, I, we went there and ran once with the Southern Modified Tour, and we, we were actually really fast. We qualified second, and we were running you know second or third the whole race. Um, but it was, I mean, that... Uh, to me, racing at Bowman Gray makes Riverhead seem like a a, a super racy and you know yeah. super speedway. Mm -hmm. uh, but even though Riverhead's come a long way in the past couple of years, uh, it's just it's not my type of racing, and I couldn't see using my car as a battering ram for forty, fifty, hundred laps at a time. So now, what about that? Past, what about that past weekend coming up at Richmond Speedway in October twentieth? Is that something you might be interested in doing? We we were thinking about it at first, and I, I would love to be able to do it. Um, but I I kind of I'm not going to say I put my foot in my mouth, but I, I told all my crew that if we finished in the top three at Stafford, that we would go to run Thompson, and uh, we kind of went and won Stafford. So now we got to go run Thompson, and that only leaves us. You know, it's different if if we uh, if we were going to run Thompson and our shop was right around the corner. You know, right. we could we could turn the car around in three days, but. For us, we're going to leave Thompson and have to drive 12 and a half hours home and then have basically one day to uh, turn the car around and load it back in the trailer and drive to Richmond on Thursday. So I don't see Richmond. Uh, I'd love to go uh, just because I remember when they used to used to race there, you know, with the Featherlight Modifieds back in the day and seeing those videos and it looks awesome and it's a really cool track, and I'd love to go, but I don't see that being in the cards uh, unless unless somebody calls me up and wants me to drive their car. Just just from a time factor and being able to take the time off of work, and having crew members being able to take the time off of work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna rule it out, but I'm gonna say I highly doubt that we're gonna be there. I would love to go and watch though, because that's gonna be cool. How about uh, Turkey Derby? Any interest in that? Uh, un unfortunately, I, that's another, I'd like to go and run the Turkey Derby, but uh, I'm going to be moving soon. So I kind of got to prioritize, uh, moving and then what I'm going to be doing for next season and, and get my other car ready so I can kind of have a backup. So he's moving. Uh, to I always wanted to go run a wall, but not getting back to your Stafford win. Um, it was, it was a 150 lap race. Yeah. 150. 
what 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 lap did you take the lead on? We took the lead, I believe it was on lap one ninety five. Or sorry, one forty five. So Oh really? With five to go, yeah. huh? Yeah, we um it it was uh, we didn't lead a lot of laps, but we did, we led the most important <laughs> ones. Yeah. You, you did a hell of a job those the last five laps, that's for sure. Um who'd you bump out of the way to get up there? Uh well we had to I, I didn't really lay the bumper to a bunch of people, but uh I definitely I, I didn't mean to, but I definitely laid it to the <laughs> one car. Uh I was I was uh drag racing the fifteen car down the back stretch and they were all on older tires and going into three you know, the fifteen drove it in pretty deep and I was on the outside of them, so I drove it in deeper and the fifty one was in front of both of us and he didn't drive it in deep at all. So uh, <laughs> it kind of, you know, I, as soon as I realized it, I, I hit the brakes, but it was too late. And luckily, I mean, my, my cousin is obviously really good, and he was able to save it. But I, I thought I wrecked him pretty bad because he went way up the track really quick. And, and immediately afterwards, Hollywood came over the radio and was like, oh, they're wrecking in three. All right, caution's out. I, I thought I just ruined it for him. But he, he was able to gather it up and – uh, I, that was, un- I mean, the only person I really made contact with and it couldn't have been a worse person, you know, it's, it's he's always- trying to win a championship in that race and it, but it, it worked out. Yeah, it did. That's the way it always works. The one guy you don't want to wreck with is usually the guy you get into. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would have made Thanksgiving really awkward if he actually wrecked. <laughs> Now, now, as a spotter, like there'll be times where I'll be spotting for whoever we'll, we'll use Eric cause that's my current driver. It gets down to about 10 laps to go, and I'm like, man, we got a shot at this. Hollywood, when did you realize that you, you're like, man, we can, we can win this race? Well, I was I actually told Kyle here uh, on the way home the other day, I was like, you know, after we passed Kobe, I had to look at the scoreboard. I was like, all right, who else we got to pass here to, uh, you know, I think we're in second. Oh, wait, and then like two to go. I was like, yo, bud, we're leading this thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's. Uh, and <clears throat> I told him after, after we got done with tech and everything, I went. You know, I wanted to come across the radio and tell you don't step on your pater, but uh, and he goes, well, in a way, you sort of did. You said, you know, just uh, don't screw up. You know, we got two to go here, and let's just finish around up, bud. So was it a restart to go with two to go? Is that what you're saying? No, no, it's like two to go is when I actually realized we were leading. <laughs> <laughs> we were paying attention, Spotted. Nah. But now, it's, Kyle, you know, Kyle, it's, tell us a little bit about your, your car itself. Do you run the Troyer or an LFR, or what chassis do you run? We run, uh, we have uh, Troyer chassis. Uh, the one that we ran at Stafford is a TA1. Uh, we actually, after the, the icebreaker, we got into a, uh, a pretty good wreck early on at Thompson and destroyed our primary chassis. And the TA1 was kind of, we bought it and we had it. We bought it from uh, Matt and Tony Hirschman and we had it sitting there, but we didn't do anything to it. And we were already planning to go to Stafford for the spring sizzler. And we built that car in about 12 days and we had a bunch of help and uh, we built it. And it's, we actually didn't even have time to paint the chassis or powder coat it. And it's still bare metal. Uh, we got the body painted because we had time for that. That's like the last thing that goes on the car. But uh, you, if you look at the pictures from Victory Lane the other day, it's got bare metal. There's unfortunately some rust in some spots. We try and keep it WD 40'd up. But it's uh, it's a Troyer TA1, and uh, we got the uh, Robert Yates spec motor in it. Oh, that's awesome. It's funny you say that. I remember when I was a kid in, in the early 90s, even late 80s, going to New Smyrna for Speed Weeks. And the late model guys used to show up, and they thought that was the trick set up, not painting your chassis. You know, like Junior Hanley and Dick Trickle and all those guys would show up with bare metal chassis. And they said, well, why paint it? You know, uh, it just adds weight, and most of the time they get wrecked up anyway, and we got to weld back on them anyway. But, yeah, they would show up with bare chassis too. So maybe that still uh, holds true today, that that's the hot setup. Yeah, I, you know what? You're not the only person that said that about New Smyrna with all the guys that would come down from the Midwest. There's a couple people that told me that when they saw the car. They're like, ah, it looks like one of the old – late models down in speed weeks yeah those guys never painted their chassis it was it was weird seeing that yeah. you know um the car that you wrecked at the icebreaker was that a ta2 or was that a ta1 also 
That was actually uh, an older style. It was like the the 08 style car. Uh, uh, which which has, is a good style of Troyer to have, the 08 style. Yeah, you know? yeah, it never gave us any issues. That was actually the one that we ran at Myrtle Beach when we ran uh, in the top three, five the whole day. But now it's got a TA1 front clip and uh, a new rear clip on it. We're actually starting to work on that this week, just trying to get ready for, for next season. So you have two cars then? Yeah, we have two cars. We only have one motor, um, one transmission right now, because uh, we we had to basically, you know, come out of pocket and fix the chassis before, you know, we didn't want to put the carriage before the horse. You know, you got to have a car and then you can get a motor and a transmission and, and that kind of stuff. So now you say you only run five to six races a year on the modified tour. I, I'm just curious, how do you go about picking those races? Do you pick it by the track you like, or do you pick it by like? just when you have money you pack up and go or how do you decide which races you choose and which races you don't choose well for us being this far south we got to go with the ones that geographically make sense um so you know for us we obviously we're going to run myrtle beach uh we're going to run langley because those are two of the three closer ones i would have loved to have run bristol but we just uh we didn't have time and we we hurt the motor you know, at Stafford in the in the summer race, so we didn't have an engine. Um, but a- after the geographic aspect, we go with the tracks that we really like, and we went to Stafford last year at the fall final and ran pretty well for our first time there, and we've gone back and gotten a little bit better each time. Um, so we go with the ones that we like, and we're going to Thompson. I I do really like Thompson. It, it doesn't seem to like me very much so far, but <laughs> – uh, hopefully we can change that next weekend. But yeah, it's it's really the ones that we like. We go with which ones are closest and make sense to go to, and then the ones that we like. And then after that, it's the ones that we have the money to run. So, look, Where is your trophy from Stafford at right now? <laughs> uh, well, actually, um, I got uh, because I am the the owner and the driver, so I've got the uh, the driver one sitting on my desk. And then the uh, the owner one is actually like on my kitchen counter, just because it's it looks cool. It looks really cool when I come home from work. <laughs> how, do, how does it work in NASCAR with the purse pay? They don't pay you right on the spot, do they? They mail you a check, or how no, does that we work? Usually, we usually get that about uh, three to four weeks later. Oh, really? That long, huh? Yeah, it's a, well, it depends on the race. Sometimes you get it two weeks. Sometimes you get it three weeks. I, I think honestly, it depends on the state, because like uh, I think in Connecticut. You know, you get like they take the state takes tax out before you even get it. Oh, and really? Then, like uh, South Carolina doesn't do that. It's, it's it's a little different for each track. Because I was about to say, if you win Thompson, then you'll have plenty of money. Maybe you could make it to Richmond, but if you got to wait three to four weeks for it, that's not going to make oh, a yeah. difference. No, no, yeah, that that wouldn't be the case. But if I knew I had it coming in, it might be. Uh, we might spend it a little differently for sure. Right, right, right. Uh, Anything else, Tim, you want to ask these guys? Well, I was going to ask them, how, how did you actually get started? I mean, we have a lot of guys that call in and they said, oh, yeah, we started with karting or this or that. And then some people jumped into it late. And I'm just curious, how did you, you know, start getting into racing and, uh, you know, end up where you are now? Uh, well, I started actually, that's uh, it's actually how I met, uh, met Hollywood. Uh, I started racing go-karts. Uh, my dad was uh, a pretty pretty well-known engine builder for go-karts when we lived on long island in the uh 80s 90s and and uh i really didn't have a not that i didn't have a choice but i grew up around you know go-kart racing and the engine shop my entire life so as soon as i was able to i was racing go-karts and i went uh we went all over the east coast racing go-karts with my cousin justin and uh, a bunch of friends and I moved up to USAC, the Ford Focus Midgets, uh, out of that, and won a, we won a race actually down south here uh, right after I moved, and we went from midgets to actually pavement super late models for, for a little bit, and then took a couple years off and uh, started my own business, and then and then we started racing modifieds. So. Wow. And. I don't know. I mean, I was one of the guys that said, hey, that looks cool. I want to do it. And then jumped into a factory stock when I was in my late 20s and just said, hey, let's 
have fun here. So it's always interesting to see see how the other guys, you know, climbed in and got started. Uh, looks like we have somebody calling in here. Uh oh, hotline. Uh oh, hotline's Hello. ringing. Let's see who it is. Hello. Hello, caller. Hello. <laughs> you have a question for uh, last week's winner in the modified tour? Yeah, why did he run into the guy in the 51? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to answer? Oh, he's going <laughs> yeah, to Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> Hollywood, answer it. What's that? Why did why'd you guys run into the 51? Our, our first caller... Oh, well, I, I, I really think I really think what happened was you know the fifty one just run out of talent going in. The <laughs> and, uh, you know I've I've always been a firm believer, especially growing up. You know Kyle and I racing go karts against each other. That Kyle has always been the better Bon Senor. <laughs> you know, but you know him actually being you know a good family member and you know taking care of his business and stuff. You know he ain't always had the time to go racing, but you know like I said. Ever since day one, Kyle's always probably been the better driver in my eyes. <laughs> spoken, spoken. I would have never called in if I knew Hollywood was going to be on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I, you know, congratulations to you on your championship, but I, well, I'm we, really glad that. Yeah, we have to announce know, that first. Calling in you, is the 2018 Modified Tour champion. I'm just really glad that he learned, you know, learned how to hold the wheel because. I remember spotting for him back at Riverhead, and we took the green, and he let go of the wheel coming off four and stuffed her in the fence before the start-finish line. So I'm glad to see he's come a real long way. All right, all right, Hollywood, settle down. Um, oh, go ahead, Scott. You got them both now. Uh, Justin, we just want to congratulate you on on winning the championship. We, uh, we, we kidded with you a few weeks back when you came on to do the show with us that sometimes we're bad luck for uh, people that come on the show. They, they go downhill after they do the show, but you actually – did better, and, the, and you won, won the championship, and it's pretty cool that you locked it up before the season's even over, and it kind of takes the pressure off you going into Thompson. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, it's a great thing that you, you won the championship. You guys set out to do that. I, you guys also won the owner's championship too, right? Yeah, you know, we did. Uh, we were able to win the owner's championship this year. There was no uh, no Ryan Priest for most of the year, so that's the only way it would have been mixed up, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was an awesome day, you know, especially for Kyle to be there, and uh, for him to get his first win and, you know, be able to run over to him and, and have that moment in victory lane, uh, it was pretty special. So uh, really good day for the Bonsignor family for sure. I think I did see a picture of uh, you guys. Uh, it, it said, like, cousins, you know, after the race. Uh, it, it looked pretty cool. So I, congratulations to both of you. Yeah, he probably didn't know who was running up from behind him at first. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. He, he, probably, he probably didn't know if you were going to – if you if you were going to congratulate him or if you were mad from him running into the back of you either, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was I was a little skeptical. <laughs> He's six two and I'm five nine, so there wasn't going to be much of a fight. <laughs> he was usually the one sticking up for me over the years, not the other way around. I, I wasn't going to be fighting his battles. <laughs> wow. Um. But over all in all, it sounds like it's been it was a great race. Uh. And you know the results. You know just make it a incredible moment as you said for the uh, bots in your family um i mean was did you guys party pretty hard afterwards or um no <laughs> not i didn't know <laughs> <have> i <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, it's I hard, drove hard 12 to do hours it. home and went to work <laughs> when you got a 12 hour ride home it's hard to party hard at all <laughs> so I, yeah. you know that, yeah. that is the problem with racing now everybody's so busy now it, 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 i remember when i was a kid like you know richie evans and then would hang out in egypt at speedway until like two or three o'clock in the morning nowadays everybody just like it's like the race to get out of there anymore but life, life's become so much more busier now and, and people don't really take the time to to enjoy it it's usually around christmas time when it sinks in that you want a championship like that and a big event like like the full finale at stafford you know well, well, yeah, Scott. It's, it's schedules, you know, everybody's got to be at work the next day and you know, they got 10, 12 guys all volunteer their time. And like Kyle had a 12 hour ride home with his team. So, uh, you know, we're all going to be at Thompson together. So hopefully we can share a beer there. So I would have, uh, well, provided the funds were there, I would have uh, bought the crew guys a hotel room for the night. So we're staying, we're going to go out, hang at the bar. We're going to party a bit here and, you know, screw work on Monday. 
Well, uh, <laughs> you know, just, you're talking one day, one day out of the year. You know, I think it's. Uh, oh, you they, know. they got all weekend to do that now, though. All weekend at Thompson. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. We actually have that. We have that part, that idea planned already for Thompson since we were able to clinch. We're going to stay over and, and party through Sunday night after we race and have a good time. That's good. Now, Scott, you were you mentioned that uh, um, sometimes it doesn't sink in until almost Christmas time. Now, how many championships have you won, Scott? Oh, uh, I don't know. 13 or 14 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, some low number like that. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, d- does it still, like, uh, say you uh, get, say I, I know you said you're, you're a little bit behind in points right now for the factory stocks, but say yeah. you, you, you make that comeback and mm-hmm. – uh, win the championship will it be the same thing like yeah you'll, you'll celebrate you'll you'll know you'll comprehend the fact that you won but is it still the same thing not until like after turkey derby do you they go ah. yeah I, I, that's one thing i, I kind of um wish i would have handled better in my racing career i i never really took the time to enjoy it. it's always like they, these guys just said you're rushing to the next one you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like you're going home you're doing the maintenance you're getting ready for the next week you, you really don't have time to enjoy it you know and like i said when we do enjoy it is in the off season you know yeah no, i absolutely uh, timmy want to ask your friends the uh the uh food question <laughs> yeah which one um <laughs> no they first of it. all first of all hollywood did you ever get your buttered rolls you were crying about <laughs> yeah there was a little uh tell, tell scott tell scott tell scott the story on that one yeah, so uh, Kyle and I are driving up, and uh, my dad, said he was going to come up to the racetrack, so we put in a little order for some uh, good Long Island delicacies. Kyle and I wanted some buttered rolls. Uh, my dad delivered us some butter rolls. There's a difference. One has butter on it, and the other one is just a roll. So needless to say, we got a few dozen rolls with nothing on them. <laughs> They look good, though. And, yeah, and I had to. I, I had my dad spun out before we even walked in the gate. I said, "You're gonna have to tell Kyle. You know, the reason why we're gonna lose today is because uh, you didn't put any any butter on his roll." Well, now you got to eat unbuttered rolls for the rest uh-huh. of your career. Now. <laughs> yeah, his dad. His dad assured me that he's gonna bring me another two dozen unbuttered rolls at Thompson. Hopefully, they have the same effect. Well, <laughs> as long as long as they got tuna fish on them, I'll eat them. <laughs> Mm, yeah, boy. That tune is some good stuff. That's the best in the business there. That's how me and Hollywood. We, we always ask our guests. Um, I, Justin already answered this question first, last thing was on, but Kyle and Hollywood, we always ask because you guys do travel around the country going to different racetracks. What has been your favorite food at a track, at a track food? Ooh, that's a tough one. I'm definitely going to go with South Boston's uh, chocolate pie that they have because it comes from a little little bakery down the road from the racetrack and probably has to be Thompson's egg sandwiches for breakfast. It's been a few years, probably back in the Vortemeyer days since I've uh, had one, but that was probably best of, some of the best track breakfasts ever. I'd what say uh, mine, uh, mine's like probably the least healthy one, but uh, there's a track uh, that uh, went to helping somebody when uh, I was working out there. Uh, it's in uh, Slinger, Wisconsin, and they have the best cheese curds that I've ever had in my life, which is literally just like you take cheese just like mozzarella sticks and batter it up and deep fry it and then dip it in ranch and eat it. And that is uh, – that's probably the best one for a racetrack food because the rest of them to me are kind of generic burgers, hot dogs. And I don't really go crazy on it, but I tried it for the first time there, and it was pretty amazing. Okay. okay, that's cool. What, what did you race out at Slinger? Was that a go kart track you went to? I, no, I wasn't racing. I was there watching, um, but it was uh, there was a USAC National Midget race, and I was there. I was working for the Richard Petty Driving Experience close by, and we just were bored one night, so one of our friends was racing, so we went and watched. Yeah, Slinger's a great track. That's where uh, Matt Kenseth and all those guys were from. You know, it's a great oh, yeah. late model track out there. It's insane. It's kind of like it's kind of like Wall Stadium, except it doesn't have that big transition up onto the straightaway, so you can stay underneath somebody, you know, and, and race them a little bit more. It, it'd be cool for a modified, that's for sure. Yeah. Just, right, that's a, that's another question we asked too. Uh, we asked Justin this a while back too. Um, 
Are you happy with the way the modified tour schedule is? Would you like to see more races? Obviously, you being in the south, you would like to see them in more south races. Is there any tracks that aren't on the modified tour that you would love to see on the modified tour? Uh, I, I mean, there's a couple of tracks in the south that I think could uh, would be better, um, you know, in the earlier and then in the later stages of the season for weather purposes. But uh, I'd really like to see – one of the two or both, I'd really like to see either South Boston or Motor Mile on the schedule because those are two just top-notch facilities that have really nice racetracks that are fast and smooth, and uh, they're not they're not too far for the Southern guys. They're not too far for us. It's kind of uh, in between races, but it'd be really cool if either of those is on the schedule because they're just great tracks to race at, and they they we run modified there before, and the racing has been great. We used to go to South Boston back in the day. Uh, Tim, didn't you go with Didn't you go with John Blue the third one time? Didn't uh, Motor Mile used to be uh, New River Valley? I think is that correct? Yeah, um, Motor Mile's nice. Yeah, yeah, it used yeah, to be New I, River Valley. I, I remember when John Blue the third went down there. He tested, he tested South Boston yeah. and New River Valley uh, for NASCAR. They were supposed to have a race down there. I don't think they ever did though. No, they didn't. They had one track. South Southern Boston tour did. there. We had a wheel and modified uh, tour race at South Boston. I know that at least one. Yeah. John came in. Yeah, I do believe the I do believe the last South Boston LRD finished one two there. Savali and Kyle Bonsignor. Nice. Yeah, because yeah, he had a real spotter that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't you didn't get him to win. Uh, Hollywood, you you mentioned earlier that you're going out to an ARCA race. Is it this weekend you're going to an ARCA race? Yeah, uh, we're going to Lucas Oil Raceway and. Indianapolis. Oh, that's a great track. Yeah. Who do you spot for on the ARCA tour? So I actually don't. I don't spot uh, the ARCA. I car chief for uh, one of the Venturini Motorsports cars, number twenty of uh, Chandler Smith. So let me ask you because uh, a lot of people are used to hearing crew chief for you know a team, especially if you're watching like a NASCAR broadcast or whatever. What exactly is the responsibility of a car chief? A car chief is the crew chief's bitch. <laughs> Anything they say, you do. And then you also, you know, delegate the rest of the work to the rest of the guys, the rest of the mechanics. And, uh, you know, you're still, still turning wrenches, still doing a lot of stuff. So but, uh, would you say it's kind of like pretty... middle management? Yeah, yeah. You really don't, you know, you really don't have much say in what actually happens, you know. Crew chief just tells you what to do, and you make sure that it gets done correctly. So, so pretty much, crew chief oversees everything, the crew, everything. Oh, and the yeah. car chief is just responsible for the car itself, right? But a good a good car chief takes a lot of pressure off the crew chief, so they can focus on other things. So your crew right. chief has a lot of pressure then. Yeah, I know because I suck, dude. You know everything I do, I suck. Who, who is spotter, the crew chief on our car then? I was a crew chief at one point, but that was short lived. <laughs> <laughs> who is the crew chief on that car then uh billy venturini uh one of the owners of venturini motorsports <laughs> yeah we had hot pockets on here i'm sure you know hot pockets <laughs> you know, that billy venturini was yelling at that night when they won uh, with joe graf driving what were you involved in any of that uh i witnessed it uh at a very close proximity but i was uh i was informed not to uh get into getting any trouble <laughs> unless, unless trouble started. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, Hot Pockets rode home with you from Tom uh, Stafford, didn't he? Yeah, he slept uh, all the way till uh, we got to 77. Yeah, it's pretty normal. <laughs> it's better that he's sleeping. It makes the ride a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there was, uh, th- there was some good conversations of the good old days. Oh, yeah. Um, just before we go any further, Justin, Justin called in as a favor and a joke. Uh, Justin, do you want to stay on, or do you want to thank some people and get off? No, I'm not. I don't want to be on and take anything away. Okay. So, uh, and I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm an old man. All right. <laughs> Anybody you want to thank for your championship? I just want to thank all my guys, uh, the whole KMM team and Phoenix Communications, and um, it's been an amazing year. But uh, tonight's about Kyle. I just wanted to call in as a joke like you and I talked about Timmy, uh, but you didn't tell me Hollywood was going to be on, otherwise I would have definitely canceled. <laughs> you, you never know, know you what you're going to get. <laughs> uh, 
just want to congratulate my cousin and and Hollywood. They they did an amazing job. Had a great strategy, and we're in position to uh, to kick everybody's ass, and that's what they did, and that was cool. So uh, it's a day we'll never forget as a family, and we'll talk about for a long time. But uh, congrats, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, thank you. Right, uh, thanks for calling in, Justin. Yes, sir. Yep, have a good night, guys. Now, uh, Kyle, anybody you you want to thank? I I actually had a question for Hollywood. Hollywood is still there. Um, yeah, we, I, we I always got ask you. everybody. You know, you you've had a a very different career than most. I mean, you've been a crew you know, a crew guy. You've been a spotter, a car chief, an engineer. How did you get started in, to where you are today? Um. Well, actually, well, you know, obviously, it all started as a little kid racing go karts, and then uh, throughout my years. I actually walked away from racing for a little while, and uh, Mike Andrews called me back up to go uh, modified racing with the Eddie Whalen and the 36. After he got let go and we took on took on TC, obviously, you know, he was going to shut down after uh, after the championship, and he goes, uh, "You got two options: I fire you or you quit. You need to get out of out of New York." So I moved down to North Carolina started racing and going back racing and uh little by little you know you gotta first first be the guy that sweeps the floors and cleans the toilets and but problem is when somebody tells me i can't do something i'm gonna go do it and just keep moving up the ladder that works that's what yeah now um, the, uh, would you uh outside of that would you go to north carolina anyway i mean do you like it down there outside of the racing aspect or oh yeah i actually well we as a family uh i had tried my family tried to move down here when i was younger but uh just a few setbacks here and and that and they decided to stay on long island i always knew that i was going to leave new york i just didn't know when and just took the leap i had a few friends down here slept on a few couches when i moved down here they got me uh Hey, go talk to this guy. Go talk to that guy. And uh, little by little, I'm, I'm an uneducated engineer. Like, I never went to school. I just picked up on all this stuff. Most of it's just common sense, which a lot of people lack nowadays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think there may be hope for Eric Brennan then. <laughs> yeah, we just had uh, we, Eric Brennan is uh, the announcer at Wall Stadium. He was, he's also the uh, host for uh, RPM Podcast. He just moved down to the Charlotte area. And he, he's trying to launch his career down there in, in broadcasting, so we wish him well, too. Yeah, one thing I want to say about Hollywood, uh, when I first started talking about having the Twins race, Hollywood was doing quite well with his stuff there, and uh, he was a huge, huge part of me getting off the ground with that, and I just want to thank you again for that, that you really helped me out getting going. Oh, yeah, boy. we, You know, Timmy, Timmy was one of my... Uh, first customers he was one of the original four horsemen to help out and uh give some good feedback with some of the lrd products that were released back in the day and uh uh you know one hand washes the other that's you know we we all come from short track racing we all help each other out that's what we do yeah can you uh, can you let our listeners know what the lrd stands for <laughs> so lrd was uh Started off as the name itself started off as a joke at Bristol when all the all the cup spotters and Xfinity spotters all wanted to be in the first three pig pens of the spotters tower. And me, Timmy, and Hot Pockets and uh, Joe Pelham were down in turn one in our own pig pen. Joe dubbed it the low rent district. So, uh, <laughs> I always loved that. No, I always thought that was funny. So, you know, it they told me I needed an LLC, I needed something professional to have as a a company name so lrd was where it at because that's you know that's where i come from short track yeah i always thought that was pretty cool i remember you guys like uh you know putting duct tape in the spotter stands and right in low rent district and on lrd all over the place i always thought that was pretty funny it was uh yeah, and then we got our own decals yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we got moving t- up in the world and t-shirts we had t-shirts too Oh, yeah, LRD T-shirts with clear with contact across the back. It was actually fun this last weekend. Uh, you know, a lot of my better friends in the Spire stand have 
moved down south. I mean, you were back. Hot Pockets was back. It was it was fun to have you guys back on, on this past weekend, you know? Oh, it, it's always a good, good time coming up north because, you know, you get to kick back, cut it up with the rest of you guys. Ain't seen y'all in a while. And uh, it's always nice to be welcomed back up there. All right, now the and then, you know, go ahead, go ahead, finish. The, the good part, you know, still, you know, being uh, being in the tower all them years, you know, still have a little bit of authority over some of the rats mm-hmm. looking for their little bites of cheese. So you can still tell them to shut the f up. <laughs> Between yeah, th- yes, <laughs> you, you did a pretty good job of that this week. Um. Yeah, between the rats, oh, yeah. between the rats and the superstars, it's getting to be thin up there. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> nice. It's nice to come back and you know su- support everybody. You know, the good, good encouragement and the nice words from everybody. You know. Yeah, I mean, everybody. Wing, I saw. I couldn't get to you. I, I gave you the thumbs up, but you got overwhelming, oh, yeah. overwhelming response in the spotter stand. That was a very popular win between the fans and the people behind the scenes on the team. So. It worked out. Well. I thor- I thoroughly enjoyed our uh, our the red flags that we had because the few uh, spectators that were trying to enjoy their their race were listening in on some of our conversations and joking with everybody and all you know, looking back and you know I don't know if they were laughing or if they just felt bad for some of the people up there. <laughs> now the most important question I have for Kyle is who makes those tuna fish sandwiches? You or your mother? Oh no, that I got to give all the credit to my mom. Uh, if you actually, if you look on the, if you look on our shirts, uh, any of the crew <laughs> shirts or anything, it says Jerry's tuna fish sandwiches right on the back. World famous. They are. I don't know what she, <laughs> what she does to them, but they're good. That, they are like yeah. and I'll tell you this. I know the recipe, and I've tr- tried to make it, and it still does not come out nearly as close as Jerry's. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of magic in there. Yes. yes. <laughs> most people most people go to Martinsville and count how many hot dogs they ate. When you guys come to the tour races, I count how many of those tuna fish sandwiches I can get my hands on. Yeah, I knew I knew Pockets wasn't bringing all those bags up to the stand for him. Just well, let me t- well, well, that, well, let's go back a minute because Hot Pockets never gave me one, so he ate all those. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, I, company men got to take care of other company men. Yeah. <laughs> well, with that being said, guys, we got to move along in our show. We want to thank you for coming on. It was great having you on. And once again, Kyle, congratulations on your win at Stafford and Hollywood. Good luck at the ARCA race you have coming up. Uh, we wish you all well in, in your race and travels, and uh, be safe. And thank you for coming on. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks time. for having me. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. We'll talk thank to you. you soon. Have a good night. Night. All Josh, right. can we go to a quick break? Yeah, I I think we can do that. We got shit. Right, it's a quick break, and then we'll get to the show doc, and we'll, we'll blow through it pretty quick. All right, sounds good. With that, we'll see you on the other side right here on the RPM Podcast. I thought we were off already. <laughs> this is the RPM Podcast. My God, you guys look like unemployed backup dancers. And welcome back to the RPM Podcast. We want to thank Kyle Bonsignor, Justin Bonsignor, and Spotter Hollywood for uh, joining us in. And now we're going to move on to the NASCAR. Uh, we're going to start out with the Roval. What did you guys think? Well, I, I, wait. So we've had three Kyles on recently? Yeah. <laughs> All winners, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good name to have. Hmm. Maybe we good get, racing name. Maybe we can get Kyle Busch on one day. Maybe. Yeah. Well, we had a spotter on. Maybe we'll get him on next. But getting into the role, what did you guys think? It was a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I thought I it agree. was going to be a total crash. I liked it. And it ended up being a little bit better. Was it great? No. Was it a little bit better? Yeah, it was a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. It was a little bit different. It, it, I mean, I stayed into it. Um, I, I mean, I wasn't blown away. Um, and it wasn't the total carnage, uh, you know, wreck fest that I was expecting. And so I, I didn't think it was that bad. I, I really don't. Um, so it can stay. I, I was actually... Honestly, surprised at some of the elevation changes that were happening in the uh, in in the infield there. I don't know if anybody else saw that. I mean, yeah, they, they, they were they were uphills and downhills. I mean, they weren't extreme. It's not like Sonoma or. Uh, yeah, I think it was Dell Jr. said that uh, it, that was actually more than what you saw on TV. Was actually yeah, 
so I, I I thought it was good. Uh, they they can keep it. That's that's fine. Um, uh, I I'd, I'd watch it again. Uh, are the ratings going to stay up? I don't know. Probably not. But uh, you know, uh, I I maybe they could do a. What was it? Didn't they have a, a, di- a different tire compounds um, for the All Star race? And maybe they could do something like that, a little more F1 style. Like, okay, well, he's going to do this, but uh, go on a softer tire. It's not going to last as long. I'm, but, sure, you know. I'm sure Goodyear's all over that. They probably. When the It'd tires be an interesting, back, yeah. you know. I don't. There was no tire issues at all, right? Nothing blistered or blew out or anything? Uh, there were a couple flat spots. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's but they were saying that's why they had to put that bus stop in the back straightaway to slow the cars down a little bit so there wasn't tire problems because, you know, for the tire they needed on the road course part of the Roval mm-hmm. more than it held up to the speeds that were going that if the chicane wasn't there on the back straightaway. I thought that was pretty interesting. It's amazing I how heard- much of the uh, actual normal uh, tri-oval uh, that they were able to still use while adding all this stuff. I mean, yeah, go ahead, Sam. I forgot if it was in March or in May when they tested that track, but I know I recall Goodyear having a really hard time trying to get a tire for the Roval because the track is so flat on the infield, and mm-hmm. then they're dealing with all that banking on the outside. Um, so I, I think tire issues was going to be like a no-brainer, like what, you, what we said earlier yeah. regarding the Roval. Um, I liked it. I, I'm going to eat my words. I, I, I thought it was a great race. I thought it was thrilling. I watched the last few laps here in, in North Carolina. You couldn't get anywhere near the damn speedway off of uh, off of 29, 85, 77, you name it. I mean, all the, all the exits were packed. Um, so that was really good to see. I, I mean, it really brought a lot of life here in the area, and I thought it was a great race. So it gets a thumbs up here, then? I... Yeah, I, I guess. I, I think we can all around say that it, it was... How- I did not appreciate the fact that it seemed like a damn can opener all weekend before it, though. I mean, considering how many cars it wrecked Friday and Saturday, Sunday was not that bad for the cup race, in my opinion. It, I mean, a lot I of think everybody calmed down running. by then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think it was yeah. the the practice and learning what you know how far you could push it, and and you know trying to keep your keep things in check, keep yourself in check, was uh, part yeah. of it. But I mean, we did see um, uh, what, was, there was a late race restart on the cup. <laughs> Uh, cup side, and um, mm-hmm. they all forgot how to turn when it came yeah, to turn. That... The, the turn one wreck that you you used to seeing in Formula One on the first lap happened on like <laughs> five to go. <laughs> oh, from what uh, the driver of the two Keselowski, mm-hmm. he said on the, one of the recap shows that I watched, he said they they, they freeze framed it, and you could see where the, you know the numbers are. that say five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. He said the glare was so bad at that particular time, he couldn't see those numbers. He was judging himself off of, I think it was Kyle Larson that was on the inside. Mm -hmm. And he said Kyle Larson went in hot, and it was just like, Everybody just filed them in. That's what how he. It looked it. stupid. <laughs> I'll say that, and it, and it tore up a lot of cars. A lot of good um, cars. Yeah. So I mean, but what a what a way to shake it up at the end. Uh, you know, especially in an elimination race. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Sam, uh, was this an elimination race for the Xfinity series as well, or does that happen at Dover? I believe that happens at Dover. I'm gonna double so. check though. Yeah. I, that. All right, I think we've talked about this uh, last year, but isn't that kind of stupid? Like, let's just have this is the track where it's going to be an elimination race. I know the truck series may be off somewhere else, but, you know, can't they – they're both there. Can't we just have that be the elimination race for both of them? Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. I, I just think – You know, I – You got to remember, yeah, you're I'm dealing sorry. with NASCAR fans. So you got to make it <laughs> easier to understand. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. So when I got home from from working on Sunday, um, they they um, I put the race on. And my roommates who really are into racing, we I sat down and made them watch the race. So I got the last five mm-hmm. laps of the whole restart: Jimmy Johnson, Martin Truex Jr., whatever. It was really easy for me to explain the point system to my roommates and um, and my girlfriend who was with me about the way the point system works because it's so easy: one car, one point on the right. track. Um, so I think they had the whole point system down. As for the whole lining up the schedules, I think what they really should do is have the off weekend st- stagger like they do before it and then have all 10 last races. Um, the problem is the trucks, you're never going to get 10 weeks in a row with the truck series. So screw yeah, the trucks. That's why, but, but well, they have the trucks down to five, you know, five right. races at the end. Right, yeah. right, yeah. And have, maybe have them start, like you said, Scott, 
five weeks on or whatever. Um, yeah. Or well, maybe you not even have a playoff for the trucks. Well, let's say, I mean, uh, let's go with cup side. How many races do they have in the round of 16? How many? How many? Three. Uh, three? Okay. Yeah. So what if we right? did it for yeah. did it as two for the trucks? That way you could try to sort of sync up the schedules. Right. I think they do that, but I think it's the, it's the, it really has to come. It has to come down to the contracts with the tracks and the dates they allow and, oh, and whatnot. I'm, I'm not I saying mean, it's easy. Uh, I just I, right, I think no, it is doable. It, oh no, yeah, it, it would take a lot of sitting down. And with the with the way that the, the schedules are moving around, especially on the Cup side, which we haven't seen in a long time in the NASCAR in, in the NASCAR series, <laughs> in the Cup series. Um, I, I think that they, once they get this settled down, and I think they have a really good schedule this year with Indianapolis being the last race, the Roval and all that stuff. So I think if they keep it to this, I think they could stagger the preseason, pre-playoff, whatever you want to call it, season, the first 26 races on the cup side, and mm-hmm. then group the last 10 and have them all lined up in the Xfinity and Truck Series. Okay. All Just right. All right, so anyway, uh, let's get into just the Roval itself because that is the big elephant uh, hanging out in the room here. Um, the it, it, it was difficult. A lot of drivers were having trouble figuring it out, which is kind of weird uh, because, I mean, I know that a lot of them have driven tracks, you know, uh, like Watkins Glen and stuff like that, and they don't seem to have that many problems there it, even in practice. We had a problem with the pace car spinning, Sam. <laughs> it's like the Indy car race earlier yeah. this year at the Corvette that wrecked. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Was it was it Jerry Pollock driving the car when the car spun? Well, I well, they well, I know they were jokingly saying Jeff Burton or or, yeah, or, I think, or was I Bodine. Think it was Sherry, Sherry Martin Truex's longtime girlfriend was was driving the pace car on Sunday, and I think she was out practicing. And, and one thing I didn't know about driving the pace car. Um, because Martin told her, don't hit the brakes, don't hit the brakes, whatever you do, don't hit the brakes. And I'm like, why is he telling her that? But the reason he was telling her is that is what they do is when they have a speed limit, they set the cruise control on. Say if, you say if the pace laps are 60 miles an hour, they'll set the cruise control at 60 miles an hour, and you don't hit the brakes because it shuts the cruise control off. So right. you've got to steer the car through the corners without hitting the brakes, and she spun out. And I think she said, well, Martin told me not to hit the brakes, and the next thing I know, I was spinning out. So. <laughs> Well, it, I mean, that certainly made for a little bit of excitement, and, and it gets you thinking of, all right, well, this might be difficult. Um, anyway, um, oh, I had a question for you guys. Should they use the Roval for the All-Star Race? No. Uh, and I don't really say that because the All-Star Race is already uh, has a enough cluster F. In, in it. Yeah, they have they already have enough gimmicks in the race. It's a kind of a novelty race, and so is the Roval. So, you know... You know, just use the the Roval later in the year and keep the All Star race the way it is. Okay, I think the Roval is the biggest marketing thing we've seen in NASCAR since hum, uh, Humpty Wheeler himself. And I think the I think what they should do with the All Star race, and I agree 100 percent with Scott, is leave it alone. They don't need to market the All Star race any more than they already they already. It do. is. It's the All Star race. That's the marketing. Right. You know, and 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 that's the symbol of our sport. That's like having the All Star game for baseball being played on a basketball court. It doesn't make any sense. Well, <laughs> let them race the oval. I mean, it's what stock car racing is supposed to be all about. You want to know what would make me very happy, though? Um, to do, because it's going to be in segments, right? Like it always is? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, hear me out. Switch Segment. it up. Put the, put the oval, and then the roval, and then the oval. Yeah, yeah. Start on the oval. Second segment, roval. Third segment, oval. That's what I was afraid of. Now people see this Roval thing. Now they're going to want jumps and loops and everything else. You know, <laughs> let's not get too crazy with and this. Then, before we know, yeah. we'll be racing figure eights. You know, and there's, and then Trash Toronto will come back and kick everyone's ass. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> um, but I just uh, think it would be. What about the copycat syndrome? Um, I mean, Pocono's already talking about doing it. Uh, I think Loud in New Hampshire was even talking about yeah. doing it. Tim, I, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, they got a cool road course. They have up a really there, cool too. one in Loudon. Yeah, it, it's bigger yeah. than you think it is. Um, yeah, so we we might see this out of other racetracks now. I mean, I don't I overdo it though. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the problem with NASCAR. I mean, they they find something that works, and you know, back before all the cookie cutter tracks, they built the first one, mm-hmm. and everybody loved it. Now we got too many of them. You can't. Yeah. You can't. It thins it out. You know. Yeah. You know, I I I like the road course racing. We we do enough of it now. You know, the, on the Cup side. Mm-hmm. I. 
do we need any more now? I mean, I think between the Roval, maybe Pocono, or maybe Loudon try it one more time somewhere else. I mean, Loudon, they already lost one of their dates for the Oval. They couldn't get enough people there. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if that's Plus, the Loudon, they've, they've run so many other divisions there on that weekend on the Oval. they got to stick with the, the Oval. Pocono yeah. might be able to get away with doing the road course, you know? Yeah, I, 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 I'm down with it. I just thought it would be a fun thing. I saw Son- Sonoma was looking at introducing the boot again or the chicane no, the or whatever. No, the carousel they called the out there. The carousel, there you go. The yeah. boots walk as Glenn, I think. That's yeah. right, that's right. Um, which is cool to see. I, isn't that something? I mean, can you imagine David Pearson and these guys 30, 40 years ago being like, hey, NASCAR 30, 40 years from now, we're going to be racing all mostly on short, or not short tracks, road courses. I mean, that's, that's what people want. People want more road course races. Uh, and it's incredible. I, I still yeah. see so many comments of, ah, oh, what's this European crap, you know, with these people? I don't want them making right turn. I, I don't know. I've seen. I'm, Unfortunately, the finish we saw on Sunday in the cup race will be a finish that will go down in the history books, and we will be talking about that finish for a long, long time. Garbage. So we'll be talking about Jimmy Johnson making a big mistake for a long, long time? Yeah, yeah. Hey, that, trying to get deep there's, here, guys. there's definitely two sides <laughs> to that story. Some people say, okay, he was hungry for the win. He's going, he hasn't won in how many races? Mm. He's, that, that, 51. 52. At, at that particular point, he wasn't worried about if he was in the points or not. The other people were like, he's stupid. He was in the points. He shouldn't have done that. Sam, obviously, you're a fan of the 48 by that poster. Beautiful. I guess poster, so. Beautiful poster. I guess so. What is your opinion on. Okay. So, as much as I am a huge Jimmy Johnson fan, Looking at the race as a whole, you have a driver who's a seven-time champion, and I tweeted at this, and I know Josh saw my tweet because he commented on it. Hmm. I think it was incredible that we saw a seven-time champion put aside the fact. Let's be honest now. Jimmy Johnson wasn't going to win the championship this year. Let's be let's be honest. We, we don't know that. He, he wasn't. He wasn't. There's, there's no way. He, there's too many forces ahead of him that have way better race cars than him. So with that, he went for the win because Jimmy Johnson has won – a cup race in every season of his career from 2002 to now. He has not yet done so. He's a 52 race winless streak right now. He might be able to clinch one off at, at Dover this week, but we'll see this weekend. The racing at all, the racing incident at the end, I don't think Jimmy purposely tried to take Truex out. I think he locked no, the tires no, no, up no. And, he, and he tried to do that crossover move. The tire locked up and Truex was, Truex was there. You know? um, well, no. He, I'm sorry, Jimmy Johnson locked the tires up, spun out, and then he Mario carted Truex's <laughs> ass oh, you mean in anal? the rear, spun him around, and then he stopped because that stupid uh, no cutting the course rule or whatever, and he and he finished eighth. Yeah, Wasn't a lot of people are saying that Jimmy Johnson stalled the car. Oh, he spins out, he can't even get it back going. No, he actually got it going, and he was reminded he had to stop by rule. That's why now, he stopped. Truex did not stop after that. Well, he kind of did because he stopped when he backed it into the wall. Yeah. So he was stopped. <laughs> well, he didn't stop he didn't in the designated choice. area. And that's something because they, they were uh, in the Xfinity race, I believe it was. A couple cars spun through the grass, like lost control and but, cut across. And they, they, they pulled over, stopped, and then kept going. And turns out NASCAR said, oh, it's a good thing they did that because that would have been a penalty. Yet they also did, say you're allowed to cut the chicane if you are avoiding a wreck. And like they let Kyle Busch go uh, on one when he cut through a chicane. Um, uh, oh, geez, I forget what lap. Um, but they, they, they said no penalty. He was avoiding the wreck. But Did then Truex really cut the track, though. He spun out across the track, backed it in the wall. I don't really think he cut the track. Jimmy, I could see what he, they say he cut the track. He did cut across part of it as after he was hit. The back end of his car did spin through some of that grass. Okay. Yeah. It all comes back to, like I've said before in here, and I'll say it again, I'm sure. <laughs> it all comes back to the official's favorite word of the judgment call. Uh, they, they have to make that, you know what I'm saying? There's no cut and dry rule. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> there's, no con- there's no cut and dry rule for that. What are you going to do? They, if you avoid a wreck, you avoid a wreck. If you get taken out, you shouldn't be Can penalized. we just say how great it would have been if Jimmy Johnson didn't stop? Jimmy Johnson could have kept going. Jimmy Johnson could have won the race. Well, that's my point. As, as you being... A Jimmy Johnson fan, were you at that? Okay. You were like, did you want him to go for the win, or did you want him to finish second and go for the points? You know? I wanted to see Jimmy go for the win. Okay, I, I, as a fan, I, I screw screw the championship. Jimmy wasn't going to win. Okay. Right, and now, by having that 
but by having that stop rule, it kind of reminds me when David Pearson and Richard Petty were wrecking coming to the win for the Daytona 500 100 years ago. Imagine if they would have had that stop rule and they would have had a stop, you would have never had that classic finish. <laughs> well, like Sam says, you know, it would have been a great finish. It would have seen, we would have had a scene who gathered their car up and got it pointed in the right direction to go across the line first. It would have been great if it wasn't for And that you know, th- that, that turn is so tight. And the way Jimmy I don't like that the- turn. They should get yeah, away from I, I was just going to say I, they, I gotta, they gotta adjust that a little bit for. Yeah, that was the only part of the track I really didn't like. It, it, it didn't even look like it belonged there. It looked out of place. You well, know? The whole track doesn't look like it belongs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, but here's the thing. Uh, you got to look at sponsors and everything else. Uh, and uh, some people are cheering uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Coach Angles had a great weekend. Well, well, they they had their uh, they had their their message board sign go like halfway around the track, mm-hmm. like on the yep, front bumper. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, huh. Anyway, uh, yeah. Other than signs, I want to give any ideas. They might put signs on back of the cars now <laughs> that it was such a hit that those signs were well, stuck to the cars. The like one that. That, that perfect marketing they called that one what the heartburn turn or whatever. Yeah. Oh, Tums. Uh, Tums. Yeah. yeah. Tums sponsored the heartburn turn. So, um, but anyway, so here's the thing: what are, what's Lowe is going to think of Johnson literally throwing away his spot to go into the next round? They're leaving anyway. Well, it really doesn't yeah. matter. They're leaving anyway. <laughs> Lowe's don't care no more. All right, fine. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but pr- who, whoever's going to be next at bat for for him? Uh, I mean, you got to look I, at regardless of. Fine, he was close. You know, he he could fight for a win, but he he made a mistake. And took you know took out another guy who did nothing wrong. And can you imagine? Can you imagine if Jimmy was actually locked into the next round? That race would have been a lot more epic than it actually ended up being because Jimmy would have, probably would have dumped Truex's ass going into the turn instead of trying to wreck him coming out or trying to pass him coming out. But I tell you what, I really thought J- Jimmy Johnson had Truex pass going through the NASCAR turns, uh, coming off of four mm-hmm. of the NASCAR turn. He, he got was a great run. Him and- yeah, he had a great run, but it got real. I don't mind him trying to pass Truex. It just got real sloppy real quick. He didn't do a good job of it uh, of it at all. You know, he he said the car got wheel hopping on him, and that was it. He there was nothing he could do yeah. to get it back. He, he was complaining about that he should have adjusted the brake bias and all yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, I mean, he was set to move on to the next round. Points wise, right. he was okay. Just ride it out as much as you want to win. Do the responsible thing in my mind. Take the second, and then. Try to do better the next week. Uh, I, it, it's, but it's, the problem back with Jimmy Johnson's mind, he might not think he's good enough to win the championship coming down to the last four and win Homestead. So he was going for a win right then. And then. Plus, I was thinking, too, I'm like, how cool would this be if Jimmy Johnson wins this Roval? Because there was a time he used to dominate Charlotte. Right. He used to dominate it, you know, and then for him to come back on a different configuration and to dominate again would have been really cool. Uh, I just it, it was the anniversary of his first win, I think, at Charlotte Motor Speedway. The, uh, I think it was a, it wasn't ten years ago. It was more than it was like seventeen years ago, whatever it was. Lowe's last race in Lowe's headquarters area here in Charlotte, North Carolina. The first win on the Roval, seven time yeah. champion. Dominating, kicking ass. I mean, it would have been a great storyline for everybody, even if you don't like Jimmy Johnson. And I know 95% oh. of our listeners don't like Jimmy Johnson. He, I just I think he, he, he has no personality. He I get had it. to go for it. No, he yeah. threw it away. Oh, yeah. I, he, he threw something good away Gosh. in my mind, and, and it, it might have been exciting. Hang on, hang on. You want to know what it reminds me of? That hero to zero move at, at uh, Indianapolis. But you see, Jimmy Four Johnson wide with the tire he, smoking, he, and then just drive it into the wall. Because he has seven championships, Jimmy Johnson's he, career is is in the in the history books. He's he's so he he's can act done. like a he's made fool. His mark. No, he, I don't think he, I, I don't think I don't he purposely think, wrecked his car like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I don't think he act I, like a fool, but he can take chances like that. Uh, right. I, I don't know because I had some respect for him, and now it's dropping as he does more <laughs> than more stupid s. I, I am not a Jimmy Johnson <laughs> fan by any means, um, but I do think he was going for the win, and that's what it's all about. you got to win that race. Uh, Wait, all right. Sam said he's got seven championships. He doesn't need that. He was more worried about keeping his streak alive of having a win every year. More the, than the guy's been hearing for the last 52 weeks that he's old and washed up, and he's a waste of seat over at Hendrick Motorsports. And he's going to hear it more now. Ah, but if, if he... If he, if he, if he <laughs> If he followed Mark, I don't even know how long the Sam, what's that red on, on your arm? Have you been cutting yourself? 
I burnt, <laughs> I burnt myself making cheese fries last week. It was bad. He, anyway, he, air fryer, he's an so angsty he's college fryer. student. <laughs> yeah. Jer- Jersey Mike's didn't teach you well. Anyway, so if he finished second, if he would have followed Martin Truex Jr. to that finish line, how much crap, how much S-H-I-T would Jimmy Johnson have gotten on the internet? The, you want, How close that finish was going to be would have made made up for it. They were, oh, it was so think, close. Uh, he could have had a really good run coming off of that, that last chicane. But would he have enough time to do it? He had, he he had, had enough to time to get Martin. there and get... He had, to, he had to move Martin Truex Jr. He, he had to put a bumper to that car because... Tr- think about it. No, because he per- could get in alongside him and then he would, be, he would be on the outside while in the chicane, but he'd have the inside line coming out of it onto the front stretch. Right, but this was a, such a picture-perfect weekend for Truex. He had that big charity event and GoPro Motorplex to, uh, Tuesday. Um, you so know, so the, he did his, nothing his, wrong, and he's going to get punished for it? No, no, I'm just saying Truex would not have let Jimmy. Truex probably wasn't going to race Jimmy clean. I, Truex wanted to win that race as much as Jimmy did, which is why we got the finish that we did. No, I don't, hypothetically, the racing gods is what gave the, the finish the way it did because Jimmy didn't mean to back into the end Truex. I just love how everyone thought that Jimmy spun out to try to wreck Truex on purpose. No, I don't yeah, think I it mean, was that. I think he. Di- I think it happened because Jimmy did something stupid. That's that's what it comes down to. He didn't. He didn't go in there like I'm going to wreck this guy. No, not at right. all. He's like, right. hey, this probably won't work, <laughs> and did it anyway. It, that's the Carl Edwards trying to bounce it off the wall. I, I personally think Truex could have did a little bit better job avoiding Jimmy Johnson when Jimmy Johnson was spinning. I think he could have yeah. went a little he, more to his left, and he kind of didn't give him enough, enough so a room. Or, or if he checked up a little car. bit more once he saw him, he might have been yeah, able to slide across. I think, I think he, he, if he was to have that situation again, I think he would have been able to get through that without getting uh, contact. Well, it's from it's possible. Spin. Yeah, I, I, I wish. It, or he could have cut the chicane and then argued uh, that he was avoiding an accident. Right, right. So I don't know. I, I don't want to get onto that for too long. So, uh, uh, Sam, you just want to give us the a top ten of that race real quick, and then we yeah, can move on. From that? Give me, give me one second. By what? the way, um, get. I'm sorry. I was just say uh, while, while Sam looks that up, um, there's been some I guess breaking news. They're talking about removing the restrictor plates uh, for uh, Talladega and Daytona, but apparently uh, fake news. Yeah, what what I'm hearing is that. That while that is technically true, they're replacing it with what you call it, a tapered spacer. Yeah, a tapered spacer. So, uh, and, and Tim's explanation was that the cars will accelerate a little bit better, but they're taking away some of the top end top horsepower. Top end stuff. Yeah, that's what right. So it'll be it'll still be plate racing. Um, yeah, so, they're they're still taking a 750 horsepower engine and getting it down to about 550. Okay. You know, just but they still instead have of having one hole as a restrictor plate, you have two. Separate holes, one's bigger than the other, and it tapers down to the smaller. So hole. the driver can still control the throttle with yeah. more response. Okay, but of course they word it like they're getting away to restrictor plates, and the cars are going to be doing 250 miles an hour, and everybody's it, getting excited. It's, it's, you, it's clickbait. That's what all it is. It's clickbait. Yeah, yeah, and if you read the fine print, it's a tapered spacer. So, so Ryan Blaney won the race. I don't know if he actually mentioned that. Uh, Gene McMurray finished Who second, cares? Before third. <laughs> Alex Bowman fourth. Kurt Busch fifth. Chase Elliott sixth. AJ Allmendinger seventh. Jimmy Johnson finished eighth. Will finishes. Bubba Wallace did finish as well as he did. Had a hard hit this weekend. Uh, continuing on with the uh, 2018 yeah, scores. Kyle Busch thirty second. Brad Keselowski thirty first. Um, Daniel Hamrick finished twenty third. He had some a good qualifying run going on, but couldn't piece together a good weekend as they expected. Now, now what, what do you guys the, think about him taking over the 31 car? Do you think he's ready for that? No, but who else does RCR have? That's right. worth replacing Ryan Newman. because Ryan. I, Newman's I really racer. thought they were going to put Ty Dillon in the car. I thought that was the plan to get the other grandson over there. I'm surprised they, they took Daniel over him. I really like that fit that Ty Dillon has over at Jermaine Racing. I really yeah. like it. Um, did you mention the, uh, the, the drunk finish? Um, in the cup race? No? A certain someone that just barely made it in? No? Oh, Kyle Larson? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The famous... Kyle Larson passed Earnhardt. Uh, that was crazy that he had to pass Earnhardt. And, oh. Uh, who gotcha. wrecked? Someone flat out wrecked Earnhardt. Face makes and me I felt bad for him because he had a good run going. Uh, yeah, um, he... Yeah. Well, he got caught up I with that... Daniel Hamrick, wasn't, wasn't Daniel Hamrick that wrecked Jeffrey Earnhardt I, there? I, I, I think so. Yeah. Half the minute was pretty cool watching 
the 42 come around the track all banged up like that, and the kid's still trying to drive it. You know? <laughs> and he, that thing was, uh, that yeah. wheel was, he was falling wheeling, off. He was wheeling it for all it was worth, though. I'll give him that. And they said, you just have to finish. And then they're like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And like, he, there's nothing you can do with this car. It's junk. And like, we have to pass the, um, the, the pink car or whatever. And it was Jeffrey Earnhardt sitting there facing the wrong way. So apparently Jeffrey and Kyle are really good friends off the racetrack. That's all I'm saying. No, nah, Daniel Hamrick wrecked them. Uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey was trying to get a good finish. Right, with that. right, 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 right. But Jeffrey wasn't in a hurry to cross that line. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. They're, no, they, they were saying that it um, it was about getting it refired, and because uh, be, I'm sorry, he, Jeffrey Earnhardt um, made a post uh, contrary to what other people were saying that you know about him not going or getting across the line. Uh, was that when he got spun, I guess he didn't have the clutch in all the way, so the motor turned backwards because it was still connected through the trans at the time. And whenever the motor spins backwards, it's, the computer can tell, and you have to do a complete power cycle before you can refire the car, and that's why he was having trouble. Oh. <laughs> uh, one other cool thing I want to mention, too, I, I don't know if you guys saw pictures of it, after the race, but a lot of the race cars that were wrecked never went back in the haulers. They just got towed home on flatbeds like like I drive every day, <laughs> and they just brought them right back to their shop. So I thought that was pretty neat. Yes, I saw one, a, somebody posted on uh, Facebook. They they had a video of it, and they said straight to Dale Jr.'s graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, I think uh, one meme I had seen was uh, uh, that Dale Jr. was hiring a parking attendant for, <laughs> for his graveyard. Yeah. Um, but I, I just think it was weird that, you know, the, the car owners knew that the cars were going to get tore up so bad they had local towing companies waiting with flatbeds to tow their cars <laughs> home for them. No, it's what's, that app, what's that app that you use? Honk. Oh, honk. <laughs> honk. There you go. There you go. Did, um, Rick, Rick Hedrick just honked me? What, what's going on here? <laughs> I didn't get to see much of the beginning and in the middle of the cup race. Did the turtle shells come into effect with anybody? They were no, like, you never heard much about the turtles during I, the race that, like you did in practice. I'm sure they felt them, but uh, it, it didn't have they the didn't same. Rip anybody's car in half like they thought they were. There were there were a couple little things, but uh, more back markers. And they well. did end up moving that one wall, right? The wall did get uh, pushed back and angled out slightly uh, for the uh, the bu- the bus stop there. Um, now, <laughs> there uh, from the uh, Xfinity race. Um, you, uh, I don't know who got to watch it, but they, did you see the axle come out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the axle just slid right out of the rear. <laughs> uh, well, those axles are only held in by the, the end caps on the hubs. Yeah. And if that end cap on the hub comes off, the axle will slide right out. And that's what happened. I mean, it literally just, yeah. shing, you know, make a sword noise right there as it slid yeah. out and bounced across the track, which I, I, mean, I always thought that was a weird system because when I worked for the trucks is we had those rear ends in the cars. And if we ever did a show where we had to push the cars like through a mall or a parking lot or something, we would pull the axle right there because the car would roll so much easier without the axle on it because you're not you don't have the locked rear. Then, yeah, you know, yeah. Or the ratchet rear. And I was, it, it's basically an aluminum cap with three little Allen head bolts that holds those caps on that, which holds the axle in. I'm surprised they don't break more often. That, yeah, that sounds sketchy, uh, to say the least. Um, uh, the thing was, uh, Sindrick uh, got into Algaier. Algaier was coming out of the pits, um, and it was, they were kind of all crunching in there, uh, uh, you know, was going into, I guess, turn two. Um, and I think, Sindrick was just trying to thread the needle there a bit. Allgaier came over, and they're saying that Sindrick spun him. I'm like, I don't, I just, he had a run. He he wasn't, you know, it wasn't like he was sticking his nose into the last second. It was just, that's where they were. And Allgaier went around, and then everybody was pissed off. And I I don't think that, that, that was a racing that was thing. A racing deal, yeah. You know, it, it sucks, but, you know, it wasn't intentional. I, that kind of ticked me off a bit. Um, anyone else notice, um, uh, what's that football player's name? Uh, Tebow Jr. After the race? No, I didn't notice. Chase Tim T- Tebow? Yeah, Chase, uh, Chase Tebow. Briscoe, uh, Chase Tebow, we'll call him, uh, taking a knee after the, uh, race. In prayer? Yeah. No, I didn't see that. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't see it was uh, at the car right before they did the the um, you know how they drive out and do the interview like you know at the finish line or yeah. You know, I think 
I love the idea. F1 did it. NASCAR's doing it now with NBCSN. Mm-hmm. It's a great idea, but it's so repetitive interviewing the driver twice. They yes. should only interview the crew chief, the car owner, one of the crew guys. Heck, interview Ryan Flores. I don't care. <laughs> we, and I'm not picking on Ryan. I'm just saying I'd love to hear what another what another person on the team. I, I like that they the interview the winner on the front straightaway in front yes. of the fans. That's great. But yes. you're right. Once they get in victory lane, then you talk to the crew chief or crew owner talk or maybe somebody even sponsor. Else. Grab one of the presidents of the sponsor. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Or talk to the, the, the girlfriend, somebody. All right, Sam, can you give us the, the top five of the Xfinity race? I did notice the top three were basically from road race backgrounds. Chase Briscoe, Justin Marks, Austin Sindrick, Ryan Preece, and Christopher Bell round out the top five. A solid run for Justin Marks in that 42 car. He always does really well. And like you said, uh, uh, Scott, you know, top three with some heavy or some decent road course racing but, backgrounds. But this is it for, for Marks. He's going into the business side of uh, of racing, so he's he's been yes. in the business side, though. I mean, yes. yeah, he, he owns K and N cars and everything else. He's been in the business side of it. He owns GoPro Motorplex, the go kart track I worked at this right. past weekend. Yeah, so um, he's he was saying like, look, I, I love doing it, but I have to focus. You know, it, it was great to be asked and, and able to do this, but you know, that's pretty much it. So. Kind of, that was kind of his last hurrah there, but I mean, he, it's it's kind of a shame though because he put on a hell of a show. So uh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I you have to. Find he might a way be to... back though. You know, a lot of people say they're not coming back, and who knows? They might have a role somewhere else, and he might jump in something. Well, again too. well uh, Scott, j- just you alone. How many people? And I could ask really any of you, anybody here. Um, how many people you know say oh, I'm done? I'm selling everything, and like you know, a couple years later, they're back in it. Well, what happens is you think all your opportunities are, are gone, and then so you say you're done, and then next thing you know, you're sitting home, and one of your friends calls you up and says, hey, I'm working at this team, and they need a driver. I think you'd be a perfect fit for this. Come on back, mm-hmm. you know, and you can't turn it down. I mean, it happened to Mark Martin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it happened to Jeff Gordon, too, when, when Dale Jr. got hurt, and when he was having his uh, head, in, head injury problems, they drug him back out, and he did well, you know. Um, anybody see a picture of Jeff Gordon lately? No. He's looking a little heavy, ain't he? <laughs> it's all that track rock, food, right? <laughs> I, I saw a picture of him the other day. with the, He was standing with the guys he's going into the Hall of Fame with, and I'm like, well, who's that old dude? And I'm like, oh, my God, that was Jeff Gordon, man. He's he's looking a little rough around the edges in his retirement. How old were you when uh, uh, when uh, Jeff Gordon started in NASCAR? Uh, well, his first race was in 92. I graduated high school in 91. So, okay, so you, you know, yeah, so you're about 18. 19. Okay, yeah, yeah. 18, 19. Uh, and, and he's how old, or you're how old now? Yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> I think he's 42. Or, I, I think he's around my my age, though. Um, it's these damn millennials. He's like 44 or something like that. <laughs> so I the, look better than Jeff so Gordon. All that For once in my life, I can truly think I look better than Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Yeah, you are a sexy man. Um, All right, so F1, we're skipping? We're skipping F1, or what are we doing here? Uh, real quick, oh. I just want to mention uh, the K&N West uh, race. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Haley Deegan, was it? Or is that a point yep, star? 17-year-old Haley Deegan. Hey, Haley probably listens to the show because who doesn't listen to the RPM yeah. podcast? Um, I shared that post that NASCAR had of her on our podcast page, mm-hmm. and we had hella interaction between our listeners and that. So the RPM podcast listeners like seeing Haley win. Good, good. Uh, I, well, I did see one comment. I don't think it was on our, our sharing of it, but somebody else was like, this is what it's about. They need more Haley Deegans. It's not about Natalie Decker. I'm like, why well, can't we support um, them both? Not to bring this down, but did anybody see how Holly, Holly Deegan won that race? Uh, I was yeah, just going to ask the, that. How? She moved someone out of the way. Yeah, she she didn't pretty, wreck him. Pretty hard too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that. I, I didn't think that was the cleanest pass. <laughs> yeah. Hey, she did something Jimmy Johnson couldn't do this. Week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a small track they were on too. That that was mm-hmm. a tight racetrack for those K and N cars to be racing out out there out west. Uh, I think it was a, just a flat quarter mile. It was it was pretty good racing, but she definitely did. Run oh. right in the back of the guy and moved him up the track and passed him. Didn't spin him now. She didn't spin him. She yeah. just moved him out. That, of the that way, was you know? that was a bump and run kind of a thing. Well, in her defense, a real hard bump and run. Yeah, <laughs> she had to run good enough to be second to be able to do that. Yeah, you yeah, she what? yeah she was already in second, which yeah. is a, a very. Well, admirable. they said she was fast all day. She was fast in qualifying and she was fast in practice. I mean, and it's well, great. I love fast girls. Like, so. 
Yeah, we have Alexa sitting with us now. She's a female racer. It's just, mm-hmm. I, I think there's a lot of room for females in, in racing right now, and, and and they're doing well. You know, and uh, I think it's like I know Natalie Decker posts a lot more, you know, YouTube videos and stuff like that. You know, but mm-hmm. at the same time, if that's helping spread her brand, uh, you know, and, and that's something that even kids like Alexis has to be spreading her brand and getting it out there, like the hero cards and things like that. Get your name known. Uh, and if Haley, is, I mean, I'm sorry, if Natalie is doing it that way and still out there and, and doing halfway decent, uh, I say support them both. I mean, there's no reason that you shouldn't, you know, uh, get out there and, and race, ladies. That's that's all we want. I don't know. That's, I, I'm trying not to be an Eric Brennan about it. That's all. Um, anyway. So Retweet. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, with that, I think we covered everything on the uh, the cup side. Uh, the uh, the tin tops, as well, they're called. One that put the tin tops. Did they, the Roval and have they the NASCAR or Charlotte? It, it'll they, be back. It'll be back. Yeah. I, I think it'll be back. I I think they they put enough into it. I think it worked out well enough. And overall. the ratings were better, correct, Sam? That's correct. Yeah. A, a, a decent amount better. About 250,000 more people watched and engaged with the race this year than last year's Bank of America. 400, 500, whatever it is. And I tell you what, though, I'm disappointed that viewership is under a million for NASCAR races. Is that crazy or what? No, How can uh, we be under a million people? Now, uh, I'm going to throw this out there. Um, that I, I may be wrong. Uh, this may not even be a factor. But here's the thing. I I don't have regular cable, Okay. So I don't watch that way. I don't watch a satellite. Um, I'm not a Nielsen family either. I use the the Amazon Fire Stick, and I watch it later. I watched the cup race. I'm sorry. Last night, I watched the F1 race. The night before, I watched the cup race. So it it wasn't live while it was happening. I avoided Facebook posts and all that, so I, I wouldn't see who won. And, yeah, so does my view count? Yeah, because, and that's true. I think I think the tracking systems have changed where they can't track everybody that's watching them anymore. So it might might not be as accurate as it once was. Hey, if Hillary Clinton can lose all those emails, <laughs> Josh, your view doesn't count. So I, right. I think we can tell that's all not counted for. <laughs> well, I'm just – but, I mean, it, what about people that DVR it? Does that count as a view while it's being like, – that's the I, – I, I need to look into that more or, uh, to know exactly what counts because otherwise – the, the whole Nielsen thing, I think, should go out the window. Yeah, those days are over. Yeah. They, they should be because that that was better for broadcast when you're when you had to have the old rabbit ears or whatever. Um, but now the cable company, because you have to have that box and it has to be set because like, it, hey, you don't pay, they can shut your box off. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, they don't even need to take it. They just say, nope, not going to work anymore. And w- they they can track what you're watching. You would think so. Yes. You know, it's easy enough, especially, I mean, how, how else, if you use that on-demand thing, you know, it, it knows what you're selecting. It's sending it to you. So, uh, I mean, YouTube, uh, uh, their, their usage of their analytics, I mean, that I go through just for our little podcast here. So, um, I think... I, I can tell you what, we, we, we watched the race Sunday at the camper, you know, I have a seasonal campsite at a local campground, we go there Saturday night after the races and stay there Sunday, and we, we watched the race from there, <laughs> and it was funny because a lot of people put their, in the campgrounds, you, know, you put the TV outside the camper and you sit outside under the awning and watch it, and we could hear it, like, echoing through the campground, because everybody was watching it, so we're, we're hearing it from our screen, we're hearing it from <laughs> other people's TVs all across the campground, so there was a lot of people at our campground the prime watching that example race. example of that, like, Scott just said all the campers that were at Stafford, every single one of them had a TV on them mm-hmm. with the camp, you know, with the race on. So I just I have to imagine, like Scott said, how can the viewership actually be under a million with yeah. with that many people in the country? Even look, I know it's towards the lower end of sports because um, you know, well, football is not a sport, but you know, uh, people <laughs> a lot of people watch that or and they're like, oh yeah, the ratings and all that. I know hockey's on the lower end. But out of the sheer number of people in the country, there has to be more than a million people watching a NASCAR race. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So I, I think something is just off, and and the numbers are, I don't know. It, it's we need something more uh, better to found it. Uh, I think there's better tracking of our podcast than there are. <laughs> <laughs> of, <laughs> 
Go ahead. There, there is. You could pay forty dollars a month, which is crazy expensive for some really good analytics through Wix.com. Yeah. Yes. I, I, that's why I like posting on YouTube. It shows you the views right there. Yeah, it's so easy. Yeah. I, I mean, right, it, so it, what it, do you guys want to move to next? You want to go to local? Are we doing Formula One? Uh, let's do I Formula mean, One. I think uh, I'm ready for that. Um, Sam, man, did you I mean, watch we're any about of it? Two hours into the show, though, Josh. You're the one that has to do the editing. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I know. Well, well, this should be quick. I didn't. I didn't watch Formula One. I know Lewis Hamilton won the race because Botas pulled over and let him win the race. Yeah, there were there was a uh, uh, some some private uh, chatter going on after the race because Botas had done everything right, uh, qualifying and r- the race strategy, everything was fine. And but they wanted right. the the drivers' championship points to go to Hamilton to get him that much farther ahead of Vettel. So they I think it's like fifty points ahead or something like that. Forty eight. points. I think it was fifty like or fifty three. Uh, it comes down right. to, um, and, but it's team orders. Now we saw also. Um, uh, Perez and Ocon, I believe it was, have to switch because they're trying to get by somebody. But they they used team orders and said, "All right, move over, uh, let him by." And then when he couldn't get the job done, they they did switch him back. However, Botas um, remained in second and took second. And I just I I, I hate team orders. Uh, I I get trying to help your teammate, maybe slowing up the guy, you know, a little bit or something, but. Whichever car is faster, let them let, let them race for it. I, 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 I'm, don't take I each other out. Elbows are itchy. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, so th- that it's frustrating to watch. I mean, even if you're a Hamilton fan, like you know, did he really earn that win? Did he? The, the guy was told to move over and get out of his way. Yeah. Unf- unfortunately, that's the difference between F1 and everything else. Yeah, <laughs> really. Um, now, uh, it's almost like buying a win. Yeah, it, it is. It is. The thing is, you're paying your your own other driver, though. It's in, I, in essence, Tim. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, but they might not look at it like that way. They might just look at that as a team win, not an individual driver win. You know what I'm saying? You can say know, that, that all you want. You can say that all the one yeah. unless you <laughs> unless you're the driver not going home with the trophy. You yeah, I, I just think that it's like a team play. You know, it's kind of like you, who runs the football in for the touchdown. Who cares? The whole team scores the touchdown. Would you move so over just, for Nancy to win the race? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Well, All right, Scott. It looks like we need to have the 89 ahead of you for this. We need these points. <laughs> uh, turn three, pull over, Scott. <laughs> no, thank you. Just let the 89 pass. <laughs> I mean, was it that obvious though in the Formula One? Yes. Race? Like they flat out told the guy. Yeah, yeah, you heard it over. They actually even played the yeah. audio. Yeah, they do. They do it with no shame. It, it's it's part of the way they race over it. It's the difference between American race and and overseas but type race. The, the team aspect in Formula One is so much str- stronger than anything else in the racing community. It's it's literally like, all right, we want a silver. We want the silver arrow and victory in, in, on the podium, and we want Lewis Hamilton to win because. Points, championship points, constructor yeah. points, because he's Lewis Hamilton. We're going to give him yeah. away. Well, NASCAR actually has a rule on that. Remember, like that one year where it, was it Michael Walter Bracing for the first year? A they, couple teams got yeah, they, uh, they got fined or whatever for well, that. That was the Boyer spin. And then the next week after that, it was like you have to race to your full capacity or something like that, they called it. <laughs> but there's no way to, you know, enforce that, unfortunately. It goes back to the dreaded. Judgment call. This, this is yeah. totally off topic, but you guys just brought up Clint Boyer and Michael Waltrip racing. Uh, I do a little shopping at the Dollar General now and then, and their oil, they still sell peak oil, and it still has Clint Boyer's picture on there with Michael Waltrip racing. I'm like, how long has this oil been sitting on the shelves? You know, it's still got a picture of the 15 <laughs> peak car for Michael Waltrip wow. racing. Do, do you get it for uh, a good deal? It's like $2 a quart. I buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's oil. It hasn't blown up yet. I'll keep doing it. it hasn't blown up yet. <laughs> he puts it in Nancy's race car. <laughs> nah, I just used the transmission fluid and the oil and like my pickup and the Jeep and stuff like that. Um, so uh, now the, there was a little bit of pit stop fun going on. Uh, they're trying to tie because they try to get out far ahead enough that they can pit and then get out of the pits before the next guy would actually be able to pass them if they if you add up all the time. Um, Hamilton came in, did his pit stop. Vettel ends up passing him just as Hamilton's coming out of the pit. So it was close. 
Uh, honestly, Hamilton was still faster and was able to pass Vettel on his own. Um, but to make things a little bit more difficult, Ferrari even did a f- set up for a fake pit stop, like they were going to bring Raikkonen in. They actually had all their all the crew guys come out with tires and get in their position, like. All right, he's coming. We're going to change. And that was just to make Hamilton have to turn out a little bit harder. Because, you know, they'll run through the next team's pit box as they exit, as long as there's no car there. And and that's just common. But Ferrari actually, just just that little, trying to get a couple milliseconds out of it, got themselves in the way. So Hamilton had to turn harder to get out of the pits. Um, and then it was like, oh, nope, guess he's not coming in. And they brought all the stuff back in to the garage just a little trickery now that that's kind of i mean it's a little shady but it's funny i i mean nobody gets hurt so i thought that was really cool um uh now on top of that let's get some i, I want to get sebastian vettel some cheese for that wine um he oh was boy. dude this is this is the elitism crap in f1 that while i He's, while he's coming to the realization that he's not going to win the championship this year and i think he's getting a little butthurt over it well, there was some lap traffic, so work your way around them. They know they're lapped. They know you're a lead lap car. You know they, you know they shouldn't fight you that bad for it. But he's like, oh, the blue flags aren't out early enough. Get them over. Get them. I just, just stop whining. Just, just race your damn car. Um, and I was actually kind of rooting for Ferrari on this one. You know. Oh and, boy, too bad Nick Rendo's not here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but and, and that we saw the. Like I said, the team orders was uh, going around a few times, and they actually were going to, like, you could see, um, uh, I think it was Toto Wolf was uh, talking to uh, Botas over the radio and said, all right, you know, we'll uh, just, just pull it on in, do your thing, and uh, we're going to have a talk about this a little bit later because they know Bot- Bo- Botas was, in his defense, very quiet. He didn't. He wasn't uppity and whining and screaming on the radio. He's like he know he knew what happened, so he'll he'll bitch about it in private. I guess I don't know. It was just ugh. other than that, not the best race or I've ever seen. Top top five in that, Sam. Who cares? Oh. <laughs> well, actually, well, while Sam looks that up, um, Verstappen had a hell of a race. He was leading for I don't know how many laps, but he basically he never pitted. He at the end he he did a quick pit stop and he sh- he went to the ultra soft instead of the hyper soft tires, which was stupid because there was only like five laps left. Um, I think honestly he should have stayed out and tried to hold up uh, the leaders as much as or the you know second third which would have been Hamilton and whoever right. held them up as much as possible. Even even if Hamilton and Botas get by, he still is on the podium. He ends up finishing like fifth or something, um, which I. I don't know. I, I I just think that they should have just left them out there. Uh, it was Hamilton, Botas, and Vettel on the podium for uh, the Russia race. Uh, what about uh, then? Then uh, Raikkonen and Verstappen out of the top five. Okay, so Verstappen was top five. Okay, yeah. Correct. I just it, it was. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, and then did you see that uh, uh, Gasly and um, Hartley? Um, had brake failures. Uh, they 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 had brake failures at about like the same exact time. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, like th- their brakes just stopped working. They couldn't. They had no brakes. It just went away, and they were trying to figure out what the hell the failure was about. So I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, Sam, anything going on in IndyCar? Not that I know of. Yeah, not that I've here. read throughout the week. Uh, I know there's been you know little bits here and there, but nothing. Season's over. Scott Dixon Day, we covered that last week. I think we can move on to local. Yeah. Uh, local, King of the Green. King of the Green. Ted Grow, where are you? Hello, Ted Grow. Yeah, he needs a no Here show. Boy. I Here tell boy. you what, though, Ted's been posting a lot on Facebook and social media. He's been uh, posting a lot of people that have been uh, registering and signing up. And uh, the entry, entry list is looking pretty good for the Modifieds up there. I think it's going to be a great racing weekend up there for them. I hope the weather cooperates for them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be in Dover. I'm gonna be at Dover thanks to Truex. That, that that's the only bad thing about King of the Mountain this weekend. It's falling on Dover weekend, which a lot of local people go to Dover, so that might hurt their crowd a little bit. Another thing that happened that kind of ruined the King of the Green weekend is Wall Stadium extended their season a week, uh, so now we're, guys like us are racing this weekend and can't make it up there. So yeah. it's 
kind of a tough weekend to have it for them. But uh, you know, they've always been the first Saturday of of October, and they're and they're sticking with it. And I hope it works out well well for them. Yeah, I I would like to see it where the tracks can kind of work together a little bit because I know that we do share a few cars back and forth. I, I know like people like Hirschman will will run both Wall and uh, um, Evergreen. I almost said Mountain. Um, and I'd like to see the tracks kind of work together a little bit scheduling wise. I know when you're trying to make up for for rain dates, and this year was especially horrible for rain yeah, outs. The thing is, Wall Stadium you know, didn't extend the year because of rain dates. It, it was on the schedule when it first came out. She yeah. she made our season two weeks longer. We started a week earlier and mm-hmm. ran a week later, so it ran into King of the Greens weekend. Yeah. Well, I I just I know it's been tough all the way around on on the guys too. So. Um, but I think there's enough cars to go around. I think both tracks are going to have great turnouts this weekend, and the local racing is going to so. be good this weekend. Um, uh, then, so uh, fan appreciation night. Uh, it got to uh, there was a fan fest down on the track, Scott. Yeah, I tell you what, and it was well attended. Man, the weather was perfect. The weather was actually kind of hot on the Saturday during fan fest, but man, we had a great turnout for fan fest. There was a lot of cars, a lot of people. A lot of giveaways. I was actually giving away pumpkins. Uh, John Gasco, my sponsor, he gave me a bunch of these <laughs> little small pumpkins that you would put on like your kitchen table and stuff. You know, not okay. the real big ones, the real small ones. The, the gourds. And, uh, is that what they are? They're small ones, like the size yeah. of an orange almost. You know, yeah. but they were pumpkins, and and we gave a ton. Of, we gave a ton of them away, and uh, it, it was just a great turnout. Uh, a lot of people, you know, going back to what we were talking about, roll. How much is too much? A lot of people. Uh, that were coming down and like, we love Fan Fest. We w- wish they would do it more often, but we do it twice. We do it once at the beginning of the year, once at the end of the year. I'm like, how, many, how much more do you want to do it? But yeah. it's great, man. The kids walk around. It's almost like trick or treat. And they got, they come down with bags now and everybody's handing out candies and pictures <laughs> and, and checkered flags. It, it's, it's really a good time that the, the Fan Fest is it's always fun. Yeah. And we had a great crowd, man. What a good crowd was we had. It, it, was, it was Napa night too. Napa mm. bought a ton of people. Was Napa it a did a great job. And, um, discounted the gate night, or was it full price? No, I don't know. It was full price at the back gate. I know it's always full price at the back <laughs> gate. But, uh, I, I don't know. It, it might have been cheaper, but it, it was Napa night, and Napa brings a lot of their store employees and customers, and they give a lot of free tickets. And, and I saw a lot of people I knew through the towing industry come up to me in the pits and, and i'm like what are you doing here you never come to races oh i, I work at napa or you know we buy our parts through napa and we got tickets to come so they came so it, it did draw new people to the track which was great and we were done early we we're done by like 9 30 so a ton of people came in the pits after the race it, it was a perfect night at the racetrack it really was oh that's that's wonderful um i think uh, we'll talk about the candy bags and all that um atco does a cool thing um the it's basically the weekend uh, or right around Halloween weekend. Or the, so this year, I think it's like the 26th, 27th, 28th, uh, that weekend. Uh, and then we'll be coming up on Halloween, obviously a couple of days later, they have their, um, they have a Halloween bash and they have a trunk or treat for the kids. You can go around, get all the candy and all that. And then they have face painting and stuff like that. They, they have a neat event going on. And we usually camp just down the road from Atco, uh, that weekend anyway. So, you know, I'm listening to the cars, then I'll take the kid over, let him get some candy, I get to watch some drag racing, and then go back to the campsite. So I I, yeah. I think it's a great thing that Wall's, you know, doing the, the, the fan appreciation nights like that. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many you can reasonably fit in there because before it becomes too much. Um, I, I think I told people, too, they do one in the spring and they do one in the fall. I said, do you really want to be down on that racetrack in August when it's 100 degrees out? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think she does it right with two fan fest, and but and people love it, and it's a great turnout. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, we want to send our uh, best wishes out to Eric Lane, um, who well, it's a sportsman race, so you can guess what happened. He broke his wrist. Yeah, um, uh, his, his wrist is, is actually not broke now, but he has like a lot of pulled and torn ligaments in his hand. So uh, and severe. They haven't announced. It. They want the car to race this weekend, but they haven't announced the driver yet. I, I did put my name in the hat. I, 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 I heard so I Scott Riggleman. <laughs> but we, so, yeah. I tried to get in the car, but I haven't heard back from him yet. So, <laughs> I, th- You think they'd ask me just so I can try to show them uh, how to not they, crash? 
<laughs> no, I don't think they put you in the car because all you do is bash the sportsman division. So uh, yeah. I think you ruined it. Yeah, I, th- I think I would have to t- turn it down on principle. <laughs> yeah, no. You'd ask for it just to, just to turn it down. Yep. <laughs> Why not me? Why not me? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, another side note, which was kind of crazy. I, I pit next to Jimmy Blewett, and he sold his car right then and there on the spot. He didn't even come home with his race car. Um, it was bought by George Andretta, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens to that car. Jimmy sold the modified right then and there at the racetrack. Wait, before or after the race? He actually sold it before the race. The deal was made before the race, but then he raced the car, and then the new owner took the car right there at the racetrack when the feature was over. Wow. Uh, yeah. where, where did he finish? Uh, fourth. Four. All right, so it's still a pretty good job. Um, yeah. Uh, was there any damage when it went home? Yeah, there was a little bit. The front bumper was pushed in. The, the left rear quarter panel and and tail panel was pushed in. And I said, Jimmy, you're at least going to take it home and fix the body for him. He's like, no, the guy wants it now. He's taking it the way it is. So, And that, you know what? And that's the, the right way to buy a race, tr- race car. You buy it right at the racetrack. Don't let them take it home. This way shocks don't get changed. Springs don't get changed. None of those adjustments. <laughs> yeah. Take it right then and there. Wow. That's crazy to part with a car. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm too uh, yeah, sensitive. Jimmy was upset about it. You know, he, I seen the guy walk away, and, and Jimmy called me over to his car because he was climbing in, and I thought he wanted me to put his window net up for him or something like that. And he, he looked at me with, like, this sad puppy dog. <laughs> He's like, that guy, that guy just bought my car. I said, well, Jimmy, that's what happens when you put your car up for sale. Someone buys it. He's like, I know. I said, <laughs> it would sell that quick. Because <laughs> he did put it up for sale. You know, on, during the week, he put it up on Instagram for sale, and it, it sold Saturday. I said, what are you upset for? That's what happens when you put something up for sale. He's like, yeah, but I just didn't think it would sell that quick. He's like, this thing's my baby. I'm like, oh, oh well. Yeah, well, he's got a whole yeah. shop full of those, so he'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so um, that's really all I had time or conscious mind to put on the so list. So, what was the, the rundown? Who won Sam and all that good stuff? Oh, give me a second. I had it pulled up here. WallStreetRacing.com uh, Boo, 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 boo. Oh, he's geez. pulling that up, just to let everybody know. This weekend's championship night, double points. There's a, a bunch of championships uh, going to be decided this weekend. I still have a long shot from from the outside. You're uh, not mathematically out of it yet, is what I'm you're saying. I'm not mathematically out, and I was included in the press release, so that must mean I have a chance. Uh, you know, how do they say in Dumb and Dumber? Well, there is a chance. So. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Um, as far as the all the points, what, is this factory stock the closest one? Points wise? Uh, no, the sportsmen. The sportsmen are really, really close. Well, now it's down to two because Eric's out. Because Eric was in the top three, and they were real close. Now it's coming down to uh, Kevin Davis and then. Oh, here's Kyle a Cisco question: uh, Could Eric Lane start the race? Literally climb in, start the race, wait for that caution when they rack wreck in a lap. Uh, uh, the uh, problem with that is. Um, Medical Jeff clearance? Lane was asked that question on social media, and he did answer back. He said the problem with that was is Eric did leave the, ra- the racetrack in an ambulance and went to the hospital. And for him to be able to race, he would need medical clearance. And he said there's no way with the damage done to his hand that um, the doctor's going to give him that for this weekend. So uh, uh, there's I don't, really no chance I don't of him getting stuff. in the car. Darn. So uh, – Big Van Winkle won Logic Car Race. Oh, sorry, Josh. No, I was just saying, I mean, I wasn't sure if the points work that way, but if you can start the car, do you, do, with the Oh, they would. The yeah, yeah, no, they would work that way. Yeah. The points okay. would go to the guy that took the green flag and started the race, but in his circumstances, he, he's not even allowed to do that. So, Nick Van Winkle won Logic Car Race. Shannon Manjo took the factory stock and a limited model feature. TJ Graves won the four-cylinder race with his butt kicker. Uh, Michael Risen <laughs> won the sportsman feature, and Eric um, Moriello, which good to see Eric back at Wall Stadium Speedway on his mm-hmm. limited schedule, but he took the checker flag and the 40-lap modified feature this past weekend at Napa Fan Fest night. And, and Eric pretty much passed everybody on the racetrack. I think he got in a little bit of a tangle at the beginning of the race and went all the way to the back, and he came all the way up through and passed everybody and won that race. It was a great run for Eric. Scott, how was the factory stock race? Uh, it was fun. Uh, it was good. I started 11, finished sixth. Uh, it, it, it was a good race. It really was. Uh, it was a lot of mixing it up, and, uh, and there was a few uh, cautions, but nothing really major. It was a good race. We had 23 cars this week, uh, which is a great field for us. Um, mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. I just wish they'd give us more laps, man. We get we get full fields, and it's tough to move up. 
in 25 laps. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I wish that we would go 30 or 35, but whatever. It's such a competitive class. It's it's hard yeah. to make the passes. I'm wearing my uh, Brian O'Shea shirt tonight. Uh, I heard he has to uh, break in his new bumper for uh, next yeah, week. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Brian had a tough race, man. I, I seen him get towed in after the race. It looked like he had a broke axle or something. There was a gear oil all over the side of his car, so I don't know what really happened Oof. there with Brian. Yeah, um, uh, that and I think the uh, race monitor was showing some funky stuff. Um, uh, I'll show you, have to show you later, Scott. It was I don't know what was going on there. Like names were yeah, showing up you, wrong. And... A lot of people sit home and watch that race monitor, and they'll call me, oh, you weren't doing so good. I was watching a race monitor. I said, sometimes that race monitor just doesn't tell the right race story. Race monitor is not official. I had problems with race yeah. monitor all this past weekend, too. Yeah. So it's, it's not official. Yeah, right. well, Koenig was showing up as a dollar sign comp. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, saw I don't that. know if yeah. that's the track doing that or if that's him being, you know, like, yeah, money comp. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> now, you mentioned it was double points. As far as the modifieds goes, does Jimmy have enough points where he's got it locked up? Or... Um, well, yeah, he's got it pretty much clinched because they don't get that many cars. So if even if he finished dead last, it would still be 14th, and he would still probably get like 20 points on a normal night. And if you double him, he gets 40. So th- I don't think there's any way he can lose the points. But now in the factory stocks, it's different. Like, say, I think I'm 90 points behind Mikey Montano. If he finished last in our race, he would only get two points on a normal night. On a double night, he would get four points. And if I win, it's 110 points. So, I, you know, I still have an outside chance. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think the only way Jimmy could lose is if they had a full field of 24 cars and he finished last and like Andrew won the race, which was yeah. probably not going to happen because they haven't had a full field except for once this whole year. You're 117 points behind Mike, uh, Scott. Am I really? Well, yeah, then I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hate to be that guy, but I was curious. That's all. Right. Curious. Sorry, Scott. And, and it also goes to show you how much I paid attention to points this year. I, didn't, I really didn't really pay much attention. And, and, and you know what? And that's funny. I, I, have won a, I have won a lot of championships, and people think I am a points racer. I just race, and wherever the points fall, they fall. You know, it's But you don't really mind better. when you uh, get that championship trophy. No, no, I don't mind at all, and I'm happy <laughs> when I do get it. But I think the best way to points race is just race every week and don't, and don't look at the points. Just let them. Just let the points fall where they Just fall. Just do your best every week. So That's what it comes down to. Just do your best every week. That's it. Yeah. And okay. don't wreck like Jimmy Johnson on the last lap, and you're fine. Yeah. I hate when that happens. Make sure you adjust your brake bias, Scott. <laughs> uh, we're not allowed to break bias. I don't know what kind of factory stock you have, Josh, but I, I <laughs> play right. by the Mine rule. did have a knob think... for it, but uh, it wasn't hooked up. It wasn't anything. hooked up. I, th- I think we're done here. <laughs> I love you too, Sam. To what, oh, what did you learn today? I learned Josh is a cheater and how to break bias. And, and <laughs> I hate you. Is that all you learned, Scott? Uh, yeah, let's let's go with uh, what have we learned. Let's hit Alexis. Is she still awake over there? I can't oh, yeah. see her on the screen. What did you learn today? Alexis, what have you learned today, honey? She's kind of rolling her shoulders. <laughs> Do you speak? This is Nothing. Do you have school tomorrow, Alexis? Yes, she does, and uh, she lobbied to come down here because Justin. I told her that Justin Bonsignor was going to be on, and that's her favorite modified tour driver. And she, mommy and daddy she let her say one word when he was. My, on. Yeah, mommy and daddy let her come on a school <laughs> night, and she hasn't said one word. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Sam. What have you learned today? Well, I was eavesdropping on the first segment, and I have to say I've been to Slinger Speedway, probably one of the best speedways I've ever gone to, and they have great cheese curds. Um, so <laughs> Slinger's a great track. I learned that Jerry's tuna sandwich outdoes Jersey Mike's. Uh, NASCAR drivers forget to turn. Can openers make great racetracks at the <laughs> Charlotte Roval. Uh, NASCAR, do- the NASCAR, doesn't ha- uh, NASCAR does not have a turtle problem anymore. Josh's uh, view uh, doesn't count as per what he said a few hours ago. And Lexus is going to have a long day at school tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sam, what did you learn? I learned that Sam had a girlfriend. He actually said on here he had a girlfriend. I think that's the first time he's actually admitted that on, on air. Well, well <laughs> he meant he had a girlfriend over. I mean, he has multiple <laughs> girlfriends. Uh, <sighs> he's getting their slide. That was well, important, Sam. Sam has a girlfriend at college. That's the good news. The bad news is it's not Claire. Whatever happened to Claire? <laughs> He has, he's got a girlfriend in Jersey, a girlfriend in... I, 
Ah, oh. they they just all hey. storm his apartment. But, but I'm sure to see a, a pattern Why here with the RPM podcast. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as someone gets a girlfriend on the RPM podcast, they kind of disappear. They disappear. On us, you know? yeah. Sam, gets, Sam has never been late to a show, and today he, he's got a girlfriend. He's late to the I, show. I had a class. <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 I will get you guys a screenshot. I'll post it on our Facebook later from Sam, uh, his text messages saying slide job later. No, please, please don't. Because I, <laughs> God. All right, yeah, what have you learned, man? We got like two hours, two and a half hours of this show. I said I learned he had a girlfriend. Sorry, Sam. I shouldn't have bought that up. <laughs> That's it. I also, no. All right, Josh, what have you yeah, learned? Go ahead. Go ahead. It's okay. I learned that unbuttered rolls are the way to go. Uh, I learned that everyone but me plays Fortnite, apparently. Um, that's, <laughs> uh, turn one is the low-rent district. Um, <laughs> uh, My bad. I, I learned that even modified tour drivers hate Bowman Gray Stadium. Thank you. Um, I learned that Sam cuts himself. Uh and I learned that they are changing the restrictor plate holes for Scott. You know, they're small ones. And the, and anyway, um, and uh, I learned that cars get sold when you put them up for sale. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thought? I learned if you don't want to sell your car, don't put it up for sale. That's what I learned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, real quick before we, we uh, close the show out. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Racing Podcast NJ. Check us out on Instagram at the RPM Podcast. Use the hashtag hashtag the RPM Podcast to stay connected with all thing RPM Podcast related throughout the week. That works for me. The right, RPM Podcast.com. Go to wall. Yeah, it's, it's been a fun one. So uh, we'll do this again, I guess, next week, you think? Hopefully. Hopefully. Sure. Uh, do you think Eric Brennan will come back ever? I think he lost his phone when he got across the, the <laughs> Mason Dixon I can only line. post pictures of me drinking with friends. <laughs> I, oh, God. That's <laughs> Ooh, the hot dog truck came down the street. Josh, end the show. <laughs> I'm not right. the host. Good night, everybody. Go to wall. <laughs> Go to wall.